Hello, everybody. What's up? NASCAR Weekly Podcast is live. Uh, yes, you did hear me clicking and everything. I just wanted to make sure I said that right off the bat. Well, you watching on YouTube did. Um, it was more because I forgot to mute myself because I looked outside, and I'm pretty sure there was, if not a car crash, a fender bender right outside my house. Right as oh, well. yeah. Oh, so I wonder what you were looking at. Yeah, yeah. So, I was like, what the hell? But, yeah, um, I was like, what is he looking at? Not knowing what's out your window, no, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> well, at least we know the paramedics are close by. So it's, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hear the sirens soon. Yeah, hopefully, right hopefully everyone will be okay in the end. Yeah. Um, we will read all those super chats. Uh, in the super chat stage break lick that like button over 300 of you in here like goals at 400 tonight uh so Ooh. yeah we're, we're we're putting the steaks up a little bit yeah and now i'm hungry i haven't had dinner and i'm thinking of steak anyway <laughs> guys i don't know i don't think we have that much to talk about this week yeah there's just another atlanta race nothing uh, really to talk another about one of those it's fantastic atlanta finishes uh, i'm gonna talk because daring blew his mic out but <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just saying, the Atlanta finish. Oh, my God. All right. Well, yeah, let's talk about that Atlanta race uh, since, I guess, you know, we're all in here. We're already go. Uh, let's just jump into the deep end or, I guess, the shallow end when it comes to how close the finish was. We had three one thousandths of a second as the margin of victory, three wide at the finish. So, I'll put this in perspective. I saw somebody at, uh, I think NASCAR and NBC had tweeted this or something, that the top three being separated by seven one thousandths of a second means that Kyle Busch, if he finished second, would have been the ninth closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history. And he finished wow. third. Yeah, oh, I believe wow. it was the closest margin of victory between first, second, and third in NASCAR history. So we did set a record, as far as I am mm -hmm. yeah. uh, aware. A racing yeah. record. It beat uh, Chicago Lando 3-4 uh, IndyCar. That's right. When it was the IRO. Yeah, when they always had those close finishes. Yeah. like oh, yeah. I know it's, it's it wasn't the closest finish ever. And it, which one still holds that one? What is the closest finish? Uh, is it still Darlington? Darlington in 2003 and Talladega in 2011. Though the closest overall is uh, 2016 Xfinity. It was four ten thousandths right. of a second between yeah. Tyler Reddick, I believe, and Elliot Sadler. Am I? Yeah. I I'm right about that, right? That's, yeah. what it, that's what it was. And the only other finish that this can really relate to, to me, is um, in the Cup sure. Series, at least, is um talladega right when ron bichard won wasn't it three wide three wide for the victory right yeah yeah so yeah that one too that's the only other one but i guess like 2018 um, was, how many yeah, uh, yeah, i think that might have been 2017 it says it, they're saying 18 in the chat oh, okay 18. 18. 18. eight times the charm we got it yeah it's okay. oh yeah <laughs> hey to be fair me and danny had been on this podcast for two days when that happened so <laughs> give us yeah. that. that is true <laughs> but I wasn't even born yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you even DM'd me asking me to come on yet. No, I did. You just missed it for like two months. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I I got I'm gonna say this. I, I think that uh it, Atlanta the way it is, is is set at this point. Uh it seems like any backlash to it, no matter what side of it you fall on, still just is is wiped out with this. I mean it, it, this race We've seen online, uh, Twitter especially, we've seen a huge wave for NASCAR stuff uh, when it comes to trending, when it comes to new people coming in, all of that. Uh, the racing beginning to end, we'll talk about in the poll later, voted some of the highest in both our poll, Jeff Gluck's poll in general. So, Danny, I want to start with you because you've been, I, I believe you've been to more Atlanta races than any of us. What I've do you been to four now. I've been to two at the old style configuration and now two on the new one. So I, is it as great in person as everyone says it is, the new version? I mean, I enjoy it. Granted, the two times it's been this pack style, I have been in the infield. I haven't been up in the grandstands to see it. But, I mean, to me, like what I have been able to see in the grandstands, like you see them coming around the whole track and it's not, you know, obviously I've been, I've been in the grandstands in the old style. And you can really see around the entire track because it is like just a one and a half mile. And so I imagine it's it's a great show for those in the stands, too. Well, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'll ask you when it comes to this style of Atlanta, do you think long term it's here to stay? Do you think it's how it's going to how do you think it's going to evolve? I, I guess 
I know I'm looking forward to the evolving. That's that's the thing. Um, and even then, we've already started to see this track weather a little bit. These hot summers in Atlanta are going to do a lot to that track surface real fast down there. Um, it having the increased banking, because nothing's going to change that, even as much as the uh, asphalt's going to change. It having that intense banking, I think there's a chance for close racing for a long time. I don't necessarily think that we'll always see this pack style because as a track weathers, it's going to lose as much grip as it currently has. And, and, uh, you know, unless something drastic happens at NASCAR or makes a package where they're going to force pack racing to happen on this thing. I think, I think we'll eventually see, I don't want to say it wouldn't be old Atlanta, but it'd be like a hybrid is what I imagine, you know, where we can see some good battles for the lead, but be close. And well, I hate to say it like this. You know how racing was in the 2000 EA Sports games? Mm-hmm. I think it'll be something like that. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. Eric, I, I want to ask you when it comes to kind of Danny talking about maybe if they force it, do you think that NASCAR and SMI is going to keep it in a box? Because I know that Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi talked a bit about that. Yeah, I, I listened to their show. I forgot what they said. I think Hamlin has said that NASCAR is going to, you know, more than likely is going to do what they got to do to keep the pack close together. I agree. I, I, I'll i echo probably all their comments. I would not be shocked if down the line NASCAR makes a larger restrictor plate or does something with the tires. It sounds like even for the fall race, they're bringing a softer set of tires that um, will have more grip initially, but could also wear out quicker. So we'll see. It could kind of be like more extreme on both ends of the run, I suppose, than we saw this past weekend. Um, but to answer kind of the, the question in the poll, I think just bigger um, right now, it looks like about two thirds of our chat prefer current Atlanta mm-hmm. over the old Atlanta. Old Atlanta was fantastic. It was a driver's racetrack. It was unique. You know, it looked from, you know, Google Earth, like, you know, that that satellite view. It looked like Texas. It looked like Charlotte, but it raced very differently. It had its it had tremendous charm. But New Atlanta is its own unique beast as well. I, I think it's obviously gonna come down to do you prefer, you know, off throttle tire saving races, or do you like the dicey close quarters action that comes from pack racing. And that's the thing is this wasn't your typical modern day pack racing that you see at Daytona and Talladega where guys are virtually flat out all the way around unless they're saving fuel. And it is solely dependent on which line is bigger, who's getting the right push, like up front. And we saw this last year, even you could make moves on your own. Like how many times did we see first and second place trade the lead every two laps? We saw it multiple times, multiple different runs in this race. You know, the third lane would come and go, come and go for such a narrow super speedway style track. There were ample opportunities to move through the field and make moves, especially at the front of the field. So, you know, Danny mentioned this becoming like a hybrid intermediate super speedway. I think it's almost already there in many ways. It's, it reminds me of like mid to late two thousands Daytona. When did they repave Daytona? Was 20, it like 09, 10? 2010 into 11. Uh, yeah. 2010. It reminds me of Daytona in 08, 09, where it was a little bumpy guys could spin out on their own, slide up the track, get tight, but the pack still stayed close together. That's what it reminds me of. And you know, based on what the driver said this weekend, even those that wrecked out, this might be the most popular super speedway on the circuit now. Well, and, and, and I think part of that evolution, we t- we've talked about this every time we've raced Atlanta, it's not just the racing looks different. The track itself is visibly mm-hmm. aging, like way quicker. And that I don't know if it's that hot Atlanta sun mixed with the crazy winters that anyone up in the north could live through easily. Uh, <laughs> but Darian, I want to I want to ask you on this. You know, we're talking about the evolution a little bit more, talking about the handling, the change, all of that. When we come back in September, it's going to be way hotter. It's going to be, what, at this point, math. Let's see if I can do my math right. About six, maybe you know, five, six months, somewhere in there. Do we have the same kind of racing that we had in this last race? I mean, it, this last race, it was, what, 60 degrees out the whole time? Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to have to say no for that, especially if it's hotter, because it's going to be a lot slicker on track for sure. So it's going to be a lot tougher to handle these race cars, too. And, you know, that sounds like old Atlanta to me. You know, hey, it was hot. It was slick. It was hard to handle as well. But it's just it's um it's a much different style, of course. You know, I miss old Atlanta like like, you know, all the um like all the hardcore fans do. But yeah, look, I, I 
ever since the repave, um, I got to say, really the first race in 2022, I felt like got the most blowback because of, because it was 500 miles like that was too long for this type it's of track I'm like I'm like I'm like yeah I'm like we don't need that yeah. so 400 miles that's perfect I even said that on Twitter too and no I, I wasn't hating on the race y'all like I just 400 miles I feel like it's perfect for uh, for brand new Atlanta too so and and like Eric and, and and Danny said earlier too over time it's just going to be a hybrid for sure so um but it, it's very unique though Atlanta's becoming one of the, I I I would I would say Atlanta is the most unique track on the circuit. I'd say now, just based on on the way it's aging and stuff, based on the style of racing, it's super speedway racing inside a 1.5 miler track. But for it to remain special, it better be the only one on the schedule. Ooh, like that. So you, you don't want to see Texas turn into no. This. I really mm. don't. I and honestly, I feel like I feel like you know IndyCar was proof that hey, Texas can be saved. It can be saved. But in a much different way, I feel like, because I feel like if we start adding these tracks everywhere, it, the novelty well, is going to wear off. I feel if like. Texas ever becomes a super speedway, I want an additional one and a half miles. I want that to be the three mile Texas mega speedway. <laughs> yeah, might as well. I mean, the only way I can get behind Texas, the only there's only two ways I could could or could have gotten behind Texas being the super speedway. One is if they did it other than Atlanta, which, again, I think. That's my More biggest. Banking. Well, I think that's my biggest problem with the Atlanta one is not anything with the track at this point. I've accepted it. I I do like it much more now. I prefer the old Atlanta, both old Atlantas, but I still do like this Atlanta. I I'm not gonna sit on the hater fence the entire time. I will admit that part easily. I just kind of wish they would have done it to Texas. And if they <laughs> yeah, do yeah. do it to Texas, yeah. take one of the Atlanta dates away. Keep the one Texas race. That way you have six super speedway races. Maybe you open the door for like the fairgrounds with an SMI track. Something like point. that. Like I actually I, agree I, with that. I can get behind that, but only if you keep it a little scarce. Because I think that with the super speedway uh, stuff, like I said it on Sunday after after the race on my stream. I was like, I'm super speedwayed out. And we've only done two weeks in a row. <laughs> like hey. I'm good until April when we get to Talladega. But, but when was the last time well, we've never seen two super speedways in a row, unless you count like the bud shootout leading into the Daytona 500. So this yeah. is new for all of us. really. But, but, hey, I, I did say this, I think earlier in the year when we first get started to any new NASCAR fans, whether you're someone like the, the icy Burt guy, or, icy Burt. Or, or if you're someone who's coming in off the Netflix, uh, you know, hype to watch see what nascar is all about what a show you've been in for these first few weeks i mean the daytona 500 was one of the better ones in recent memory despite maybe you know for some maybe a let down of a finish there uh the clash you know for what it was being pushed a day early was wasn't bad and then now this race i mean and, and i just want to say this like you know you can talk a lot about this finish for years to come but what people might forget you know you gotta remember to me, that was just honestly flag to flag a great race. Like Eric was saying, we saw so many green flag battles for the lead. Uh, I mean, this was just entertaining from start to finish. I mean, yeah, and it had, you know, as much as I have to say this, the crashes is an allure of the sport. And there was a decent amount of those in there from right from the start, too. What, what was crazy about that, though, and I don't know the final total because there were a few crashes late, but uh, towards the end of this race, I'm like, man, there's been a lot of crashes. This is a three and a half hour race, but there were only like three guys in the garage or something yeah. like that. Like there were a lot of crashes. Denny Hamlin piled into that one crash and restarted fourth. Mm. Like there were a lot of cars with damage that were still very much drafting, racing up near the front. So it was like there were crashes, but there weren't a lot of DNFs. It wasn't ruining that many people's day, ultimately, yeah. which, which is fine. Like you know, yeah. crashes are fine as long as it's not taking 20 cars out of the race entirely. For example, Denny Hamlin Denny, was yeah. in every single caution. I was just yeah. about to say, for example, Denny Hamlin was in three wrecks there and Seven then chase. finally got taken out. Yes, yeah, Chase Elliott as well, too. Denny Hamlin was in so many crashes that he – Apparently urinated on stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I can think of with the race going longer, if anyone used to watch Grade A Under A, is he had like a skit where he like, um, where teachers don't let you out of class and it's just holding you up longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, look, I went and pissed myself. Happy. Oh. Like, but <laughs> but when, when it comes to like the flag to flag part, I, I agree. Like, I think this is, I, this won't be part of my predictions, so I guess off the record on that part, but I think this is going to end up being everybody's race of the year. I mean, it's very rare you see... It'd be hard to beat it. Well, it's very hard. rare you see a race like that 
and you see people from all over the place that are NASCAR fans that are almost unanimously happy about it, and that you see it end not with a stupid green-white checker, not with a stupid wreck that ends it under yellow. It ends with a crazy finish. I'm not going to go and crown this as the greatest NASCAR race ever. I think that's jumping the shark. But to say that this could be the best race of the year in no way, in my opinion, is over jumping it. And I, I don't even think saying that this could be in the running for a race of the decade could even be over jumping it at this point. I mean, we are five years into the 20s yeah. now. Now, what about top 10 all time race? Would you put it in there? I, I'd have. I, don't I have haven't to think seen about every that. race, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like this would be top 10 all time that I've seen. Yeah. Like that's yeah. just remember, like I can think of so many great finishes that are on par or in the conversation with this one. I think this is a top three or four finish in my opinion. Um, but like some of these great races that had amazing finishes, like I think about that, that three wide or four wide Talladega finish in 2011, the overall race was fine. Yeah. I don't really yeah. remember the race. It was a two car tandem. 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 Yeah, it was okay. Oh, well, Dave Blaney, it was, like old kids eat free so things. I, is story. I no. rewatched so, like, that. And it was okay, but it was not yeah. this. Even yeah. like 2018 Chicago land. It was a, I remember thinking that was a very good intermediate mm-hmm. race, especially considering most intermediate races were garbage at that time. Mm-hmm. But the finish outshines the race by far. This race though, as amazing as that finish was, like I was on the edge of my seat numerous times, just midway through, you know, L- Logano throwing a block on the last lap of stage two. Like, wow. That's it was just, the way it was, you should feel watching a race. There were twists mm-hmm. and turns throughout. Like sometimes NASCAR races, I think it's, you know, it's three hours of nothing waiting for the final 30 minutes where it actually matters matters i don't know i felt like all three and a half hours of this race there was action happening think like lap one they crashed you know like you couldn't look away at any point well yeah and i'm i'm gonna kind of circle this back to a, a kind of a wider conversation too is you know i made a, a, a video about partially this race but it's a car i mean this car is if you look at the last 16 months nascar in one way or another has had Four viral moments. The Hail Melon in November 2022. You have the Garage 56 last summer. Then after that, you had the Chicago Street Race, which was huge. All of these all over the place in different uh, spheres. And then this. And every single one of them, in some way or another, can be traced back to the car. And the way I bring it up with this one is, one, this this track was designed around the next-gen car. iRacing and SMI and NASCAR worked with this and it was clear as day by how badly the xfinity cars were i don't think that was all drivers being uh, uh, and, yeah. and the trucks <laughs> trucks is just its own thing at this point yeah but, i saw someone on twitter this week i'm blank on his name at this point but uh oh i think it was uh it was ryan hind i think he works for shr but he he said something you know still prefer the old track and i'm like i'm or I'm uh, like, that's fine, but I respectfully disagree. And he's like, well, until the other series can put on a good, good show, I don't think it's good. And I'm like, well, I think that has a lot more to do with what those series are bringing and in other, other outside aspects, maybe with some of them like the truck series of talent that plays into that. Yeah, yeah. and that's a lot of, and then, you know, you can make a, you know, you can make the same argument for a lot of tracks. I mean, well, you know, before Auto Club was, you know, taken off the schedule and off of existence, you know, it was hated for years, but then, you know, with the next gen car and stuff, people loved it, you know, before it was gone too. And, you know, it's sort yeah. of, you know, the same situation uh, with Atlanta, I feel like, you know. Yeah. Um, One thing I loved about the finish, and this will transition into actually talking about who won, but I love that the three guys side by side by side, door to door to door, didn't wreck each other. Didn't yeah, even yes. really make contact. Like it, it was a straight up drag it's race, just, three wide style. That was beautiful. Yeah, they were three wide. That was going to have earned it. And and I'm going to I'm gonna give a hot take here. I know we don't do hot takes anymore, but my hot take from this one would be if Blaney had won that – if Blaney had won that, I feel like it would have it would have still been good. Maybe not to the same like, wow, I can't believe that happened and oh the champion won. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, I, you know, I yeah. I disagree. I think if any one of them had won, I think you could build up a huge narrative. Daniel Suarez, this might save his career. Kyle Bush, he's just a huge Definitely personality. Definitely the underdog loves- coming out on top of that is the best story that was possible there. I but agree. I'm just saying, I think I think if you just like after that high of the finish worn off and you're like, oh, but this this guy's gonna win all the time and the other guy's not. 
Well, I would argue Blaney winning would have been best for the sport because he is your most recent champion and he is probably going to be a contender for many years to come. Daniel Suarez, I mean, we still don't know if he'll have a ride in two years. You know what I mean? So, so like Daniel winning was great. I think you could make an argument for any one of them being a great headliner victory, but yeah, I don't know. I think, I think the defending champion winning, considering the star he was in the Netflix show might've actually been probably like preferred, preferred by the sport, you know, but Suarez winning absolutely not a bad thing by any means i love the taco pinata celebration i think that's (laughs) awesome and one final thing too like yeah to their credit not only were they you know uh, three wide all the way you know going back all the way to the back stretch you know the whole time coming to the start finish line on the final lap but i know everyone you know um um, everyone keeps bringing up the uh, oh the car's finished the car finished it looked exactly like it like if kyle bush had lightning mcqueen's tongue he would have definitely won her i I thought they tied tied tied. yeah tied. when i so they crossed the line. I immediately think, I think Blaney won. And I yep. think it's because his car was white and, and it just I showed up Suarez better. immediately. But, <laughs> but I immediately look immediately look at Fox's pylon and it's showing the 99. And I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for it to refresh, waiting for it to refresh. And it doesn't refresh. It's still 99. So then I'm like, okay. They show the replay. And I kid you not, I thought for a sp- for a few moments there, I thought, what are they going to do? That's a tie. The 12 and <laughs> I, that, that's going to be 0.000. What do we do? Who the most laps? Work? Like yeah, owners' yeah. points. Like how the fuck? No, how it's is this who, it's who who led the most laps. I, I ah. but for a second there, I'm like, this is actually a tie, and I think that's when I tweeted. I, you know, everyone was tweeting the cars meme, but it was just like, <laughs> I'm like, they actually tied. It's it's like you're so, saying, dude. It was the movie for a moment. I there. I will <laughs> say though, when it comes to I had a cold take there, so sorry. When it comes to <laughs> to Kyle Busch, I'm gonna say this, and I don't think this is a hot take that much. I'd say outside of maybe Kyle Larson and maybe one or two other drivers. Kyle Busch is about the only person in the middle who could have kept that together and not made that a clusterfuck. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. The way I, mean, I I rewatched it a couple times, and the way he was scrolling around in there and keeping that car straight and still racing for the win, it, and 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 I had people in my family I called after the fact, ta- and the, my family not the most Kyle Busch friendly family, who were like, if if that wasn't Kyle Busch, they'd wreck. Like it'd be Bubba or somebody else behind him winning that yeah. race. The, the two behind him was Bubba, who, if you watched him, uh, was looking to be right behind Blaney. Could have tried to help Blaney draft and beat him. He watched it up the track a little bit. He was losing it coming out of that turn. Uh, I wouldn't trust Austin Cindric to be in that position either over <laughs> Kyle Bush. Hey, he was a aggra- great. Hey, Cindric was aggressive though. Shout I think, him. I, felt I, think like I put he in was- our chat one time. I'm like Cindric's going to cause a wreck. No, yeah. no, no, but hey, shout out to him. <laughs> to me, he was the driver of the day there, you know, outside of Suarez, of course, because and he Tom just Gillen. kept making these moves. Yeah, and Gillen hey, too, bro. Speaking of, you know, making a dicey move, I will say, even though he won the race, so, you know, we had the four-wide thing where Cendric made it work, but then there was another four-wide situation where, I don't know, some people said Briscoe was more to blame on it. I thought it looked more like Suarez went when there was two guys passing like right there. Yeah. I don't know. It ended up causing a crash. It took out two guys there. But hey, I'd have to go back for Suarez. Yeah. yeah. Hey, real, real quick, I don't usually get in the middle of segments too much, but Hunter Nixon fishing really quick. He left a hundo in yeah, there. And I, I got I gotta acknowledge that I and we will do talk about yeah. all the super chats at the super chat stage break, but I gotta talk about this one really quick he said i've i've watched a bunch of nascar races in my 22 years as a fan and that was one of the best races and finishes i've ever seen and i was lucky enough to be there in person mm, nice, nice. The history and then he it's says the there's a people that complain about this race are part of the nascar died when dale died crowd and you know what's funny because anyone and i've not seen very many uh anyone i've seen that's complained in any way about this race so are are the ones who are like, I don't follow NASCAR anymore, but this, this, and this, and somehow I'm like, but I've seen you say that a couple times now. Yeah, yeah. and it's not just I mean, on the viral moments. It's a trendy, like yeah. the repeat offender. Hey, at least they're staying <laughs> consistent then. Yeah. The, I, I don't remember a a race and finish causing NASCAR fans to be this unitedly happy. Like, what what's been the biggest thing people have complained about this week? Like. Oh man, somebody from outside of, uh, of the Twitter sphere likes our sport. Oh, like that's and, nothing. That's y'all nothing even be for us. Yeah, that is y'all nothing. Shouldn't, y'all shouldn't even be complaining about that anyway. <laughs> and before before we we do finally move on, talk about the actual winner and what this means, because I do want to get to that. Mm-hmm. This is that's exciting. Uh, lost in this conversation is Fox. 
I actually think Fox the last two weeks has done a pretty darn good job. They were a joke for the clash. That broadcast was Bush League, was terrible. But the Daytona 500 and the Atlanta race, I think the booth has been on it. I think outside of the you know intrusive commercials, uh, I think overall the everything has been very solid. The camera angles have been solid. The sound mixing could use some work here and there. I want to hear the engines in the crowd more than like we did back in the day. The crowd was there on Sunday. Let's hear them. Um, but I do want to give Mike Joy, Boyer, and Harvick credit. I think they called that last lap very well as opposed to other races we've heard them call in recent years. So I just wanted to give them yeah. a round of applause. Like well, we give them a lot of shit. Yeah, they usually deserve of it i thought fox outside the commercials which you know just is what it is was pretty solid on sunday well, and shout out to the atlanta crowd uh yeah. what, whether whatever you think about this atlanta or not like it has revitalized that track in person that was probably the biggest atlanta crowd i can remember since like jeff gordon was racing i yeah i still remember talking to fans after the first one in 2022 <laughs> Me said, too. i was with you yeah. who said i've been coming to races here for a while but that was the best experience that i've had watching here they said you know if if, if it's if it's gonna be like this i'm buying season tickets every year that's awesome yeah i mean that and that was after the first race too when it was 500 miles so like <laughs> everyone was like most against that race but you still had a lot of people that were for and, it and i won't hey. get ahead of myself now too much but i saw jet post this out and i guarantee it's changed since uh as of like two days ago las vegas motor speedway as well they were they had only like 400 tickets left to sell of the whole grandstands that place that place uh, according to everywhere i've looked holds eighty thousand. which for a nascar yeah. race nowadays Ooh. like the the attendance especially, the hardcore base is there especially mm -hmm. for a track with two dates like that's very yeah. impressive yeah for, and also for las vegas and also considering the location of the track too because yeah it's in you know it's in georgia but it's not like in you know near atlanta or whatever it's in hampton it's like 40 minutes away from georgia so, well, the real for, question for atlanta, excuse me. the real question will be if if the crowd for the fall race lives up to the hype because people have pointed this out it falls during college football season and mm -hmm. as you even heard during the pre-race prayer they love their georgia freaking bulldogs down there so hopefully the crowd in the <laughs> fall is still as strong as I didn't even think about that. That's right. Yeah. I had to hear that. Go dogs. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he, I, I don't okay, even think he said it. amen. I don't even think he said amen. I'm pretty sure he literally said go dogs. And I'm like, all right, if Jesus loves it, See, Jesus hey, loves it. Like, Danny, Danny, the, it's all good. The I, Bible I says the Jesus loves him, loves them dogs. Yeah, yeah. no, it's all <laughs> good. Verse is that? <laughs> it's all good, Danny. I heard go balls. Excuse me. <laughs> I heard go balls. <laughs> yeah, I, I better get a pastor say go balls at Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna become well. a, it's gonna become a giant like college football meat measuring contest <laughs> who can insert their team into the prayer yeah. and Talladega um, too before, who does God love most <laughs> Notre Dame no uh yes yeah I mean it's God's team. well objectively you're probably right yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh well anyway anyway before we get to the Suarez part I feel like we're burying the lead a little bit on this to a degree. Uh, I do want to read off this. In 120 races at Atlanta, we set three track records this week. Biggest crash, which I know everyone says 16. I counted 17 in that, but 16, 17, whatever. Uh, closest finish, I think we talked about extensively. Uh, most lead changes, 48. Wow. Hmm. Wow. I mean, it's kind of expected being a super speedway, but still, like to do that yeah, all just... in one race. Just imagine telling someone in 2011, hey, Atlanta, I have 48 lead changes. <laughs> um, but let, let's get to Suarez here. I, hey. And, and I, he might have saved it. He, I don't think necessarily this completely does it. But this goes a long damn way to saving you know his tenure at Trackhouse for he, the long term. He earned a contract extension. I'll just say that because I think Suarez, yeah. uh, uh, Justin Marks even said some things after the race that said like he don't expect to not have him next year. Yeah, and Suarez, to me, I feel like at this point, he's the guy that does just enough to keep his rides at this point. I feel, yeah, like. I feel like he's was, learned a long way. Yeah, this because, was the difference. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he better at this point because he, he, yeah. he went through how many rides at the start of his career? Exactly, but think about it, ever since he's gotten to track house. Okay, so 2021, first year, rebuild, you know, first off, you know, building year, first year of the team, okay, whatever. But then the second year is like, you know, with the next gen car, okay, it's time to show up. He did perform better, but then once he got that win at Sonoma, it really pushed him here. But then a season and a half goes by, doesn't have a win at all, you know. And you know, and then this week though, he's um he was going to a track at Atlanta where he almost won during the summer, but then you know the rain had you know rain shortened the race, 
So didn't restart. You know, he ended up finishing uh, second, I believe, or at, yeah. at the very least a top five finish. Yeah. How about that redemption? You know, I, I I thought about even having him as my pick last week, but I was like, ah, I don't know if he can really get back in that p- position. Well, I, actually, you know, we can we'll, we'll get to the to the uh, prediction segment a little bit later. But hey, if you remember what I predicted, like, oh my gosh, that was spot on. Yeah, yeah I, I I don't know that this necessarily saves Daniel Suarez's career, but yeah, Justin Marks' comments afterwards were interesting because it sounded pretty much like, yeah, no, Daniel Suarez is here to stay. But then he also said, hey, this is a contract year for him, and I'm like, well, I thought his deal went through 2026. That mm-hmm. was never confirmed, but but I was, or not 2026. I'm sorry went until 2026 so through 2025 so i was like oh wait this is a contract year hmm okay that ups the stakes a bit um but he's also just it's kind of vague it's like you know i don't envision him driving for anyone other than track house does that mean full time does that mean in a cup car does that mean this that you know yeah, yeah you can read so much into it he he's saying all the right things if we're going to take justin marks at face value then yeah daniel will probably be his guy and this win goes a long way making the playoffs i think more importantly maybe goes a long way toward towards him keeping this role but you got to keep looking in the mirror shane van gisbergen finished third and 12th so far this year in his first two oval starts oh. in xfinity and i know they're super speedways but <laughs> still it's like you got to keep your eye on svg you know, what irons are in the fire at track house? Can they snag a third or fourth charter? We'll see. Time will tell right. if they can't. I'm not convinced Daniel Suarez is hundred percent safe in that 99 car. Yeah. Even still, that's just me. That's well, right. We got Zane Smith working free spire at this point. Yep. Exactly. Right now though, I'm going to say no. And yes, I know I would have said yes on Sunday, but now that I've had some time to think about it um, on this fine Wednesday now, um, I would say, you know, I had said earlier this week, the real season starts now. Las Vegas, these intermediate tracks, short tracks, all that stuff. Okay, yeah, first two races, yeah, you know, we get that. But they're super speedways basically now. So, you know, drafting tracks. Now the real season begins. So, you know, yes, he has the win. And I feel like now at this point, there should be no excuse for why that team shouldn't be running good. Come on, there's no pressure anymore. Do whatever you need to do to get better, you know, um, just in time for the playoffs, you know. So it's a yeah, contract year, time to step it up. Race and you've had like a decent shot all day, you've been in contention, and then something happens. Hey, take a risk, stay out and try to get you a second win or something like that. Yeah, why not? I mean, well, it's a contract year, you know, I already got the win, you know, just go out there, sling it. Well, and barring something terrible happening, we know he's in the playoffs. So, you know, I, I want to ask you guys this, and I think we might, I might continue just asking you guys this and putting this in, and with the four of us getting uncomfortable having to answer this question throughout the season. None of us picked Daniel Suarez to be in the playoffs. None of no, us. Busted. So I don't care which one of you goes first, blurt it out if you have to. Give me reasons. Who of your playoff picks do you think misses now? I. So I had Eric Jones, Ty Gibbs, Bubba Wallace making it in. So I feel like naturally you'd say, oh, well, Eric Jones, you know, legacy. They would look good at Daytona. They got top tens, but, you know, Jones was caught up in a crash. They look bad in qualifying in Atlanta. You know, can we really trust legacy? I feel like that's the safe pick, but it's never too early, in my opinion, to look at the point standings. Mm-hmm. And I will just highlight one driver in particular. I think most, if not all of us, had Brad Keselowski making it. He is 34th in points. By my calculations, 31 points outside of the top 16. Now, with 24 races to go, Brad Keselowski can easily make up 31 points. But Ford's got a new dark horse, new new car. Can we, you know, was RFK's speed last year truly legit? Because I'll say this, both Chris Busher, well, I'd say Chris Busher more than Brad Keselowski, but Chris Busher has looked terrible these first two weeks, considering how good RFK has been at super speedways. So, you know, I don't know. RFK doesn't quite look like themselves so far. Is there reason to be concerned there? I, I think Eric Jones from my selections makes the most sense still. I'm betting on him winning a race. Let's say that doesn't happen. But Brad Keselowski, 34th oh in points. See, I don't hey. know. I'd be a little worried. I'd say Alex Bowman, but and maybe Darian's going to be on the same wavelength as me with this. This guy hasn't really won too much the last couple of years. Should we worry about Joey Logano? I mean, right now, right, I was about to say he's 31st, but really quick, um, Eric, to your earlier point, David Reagan is uh, currently one point ahead of uh, Brad Keselowski. Oof. So, yeah, we're, that's hey, a- we're all ahead of Noah Gregson. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. We'll get to that. We'll get Hang to that. the banner. Yeah, I'll go uh, with. Um, I'm gonna go with. Um, let's see. He's 22nd in points right now. He lost nine spots. You know, but 
hearing, you know, the recent team news, I'm not feeling too hot about them anymore. Chase Briscoe. <laughs> I had Chase Briscoe. It was already a reach. I felt like anyways putting him in there. Oh, that's so, right. I, yeah. I forgot you had Briscoe in. Yeah, hey, yeah. It is well, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, uh, part of me would say, like, Jared was saying Bowman, because I had him at the literally the last spot on my list. But, I mean, yeah, he got second Daytona, and he wrecked lap two, but he's still sitting ninth, which isn't terrible to be coming out of his super speedway, but it really just depends on what kind of team they are this year. Hard Sorry, to say. I'm having water. Oh, you're good. <laughs> who, did you, who did you have, Jared? I forget. Did you give a take? I, did you give I'm going to I'm gonna say Bowman right now, but I – Joey Logano, he needs to win more. Like, Joey Logano yeah. just needs to win more. And I know that, like, he's had some pretty big wins, but, like, has he only had, I think, one win a season for, like, two of the last well, three or something? Yeah, that's correct. Championship year, but... Yeah, he, he had that four-win championship season, but the year before that and the year after that, yeah. he's had one win apiece. Hey, this is an even year, and he's good in even year. So. And and yeah. keep in mind, I think if I'm – I don't know what year did he win Bristol Dirt. Was that 2021? That was 2021. 2021. Or one? Or, yeah, I think it was 2020, 2021. So his, only win in, his only win in 2021 was at a weird track, and his only win in 2023 was at Atlanta, kind of a weird track. So uh, he is very hit or miss, kind of hot or cold. That's the thing, man. And and you saw yeah. last year in the playoffs, too, they were a little bit off. And if, if the dark horse isn't up to snuff with what they should be, then I, he's in trouble. I mean, 29 points, yeah, they, I think they can make that up, especially in some of the guys ahead of them, but... I mean, I don't think it's ever too early to to look at, like you said, the points, but also just that historical background. It's not like they were the hottest team last year either. Mm -mm. No, Mm -mm. by no means. Oh, man. Um, Logano was a first-round exit last year. Don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, – he's – nothing is surefire anymore. That's that's the most I've learned of anything. Um, Especially – you know what wasn't sure fire that, that we thought was after last year was less people watching. Uh, cause this week was pretty good in that regard. Uh, when, when mother nature does not screw with us, NASCAR does well. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> so looking kind of at the, uh, TV side of things, uh, four, now I get a 4.4, whatever was on TV, but a bunch streamed it. Uh, 4.546 million people watched this race up 5% from last year's second race. And even with 2022, uh, down from 2021, though that also had the 500 rained out, which generally actually kind of helps a little bit. The second race, just cause people don't want to miss the next one. Plus it was also Daytona road course, which was a TV ratings win, no matter mm-hmm. where it was. Uh, but it was the most watched sporting event of the weekend. And that's not the only good news. The year over year for Xfinity was up 17% with 1.19 watching, uh, 1.19 million watching, which is about 100,000 more viewers for Xfinity than last year's. Uh, there's no direct comp because the second race last year was rained out and or snowed out, one or the other. Sleet it out. We'll go in the middle. And uh, the Atlanta race a little later on. Uh, the truck race had nearly a million watch it, up 13% from last year being 807,000 watching. So good stuff all around. I believe uh, trucks, both races are up this year. They are. Yeah. They are. They were up for Daytona as well. Good for them. Yeah, that's about the only good in general the truck <laughs> regs have <laughs> the had. truck series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's uh, what people thought with their with their eyes and viewing habits over the weekend. There is another way we can see what they thought too. Yes, sir. It's time for the poll, the famous iceberg poll on the NASCAR Weekly podcast. So I'm just have it pulled up now on my end and refreshed in the studio. Uh, we did it. It's not going to show up in public for a little bit, but we, for the first time ever on the poll, hit 20,000 votes. Nice. Uh, just Ooh. updated. Um, I have the, the updated numbers for the most part are the same as the ones in public, but not exactly. Uh, 84% of people thought this was a great race. And 11, Is that a record, Jarrett? It's up. I believe it's up we'll there. Have ch- we'll have to check the spreadsheet maybe. If yeah. it, do, we, do, we, do we have a spreadsheet? Something <laughs> we used to I'll do in find show it. back. Some we used to do in the show back in the day. We haven't done it in a while. It's just like in the qualifying. We all need to say. And it's a new, new, new poll record. record. That's uh, right. Because 11% 
11% said it was good. So we did hit that new poll record with the net positivity of 95%. Wow. Oh. Breaking the long-held lead of 2019 Talladega fall of 94%. Mm. Dude, that's mm. tough. That was a tough cookie it's to been crack, too. That five awesome. years. Yeah, I remember that race still. Damn. Yeah, uh, we're doing the poll. Ryan five years ago. always in, in these uh, photo finish races for some reason. He really is. He really he really could be if he he needed to the the face of the sport. Um, as for the rest of of the the voters, two percent said average and one percent a piece said below average and bad. So two percent net negative. That ties the all time low for net negative. I'm yeah. surprised they're. Just, who votes average for a race like this? Like either you loved it or or you. You know what? Their guy didn't Atlanta. win. Their guy didn't win. Did, like if you, disappointed they, Blaney fan. I'm just yeah. surprised. Just average. Like have have a, have a strong opinion on this one. Like, like everyone else. <laughs> um. Now we're we're definitely not getting all of the comments read. I, I do have the first one ready to go, uh, but we had 616 comments on this post. Ooh. That is a record again. So record yeah. records galore for this that's, week. That's the same number of people as we got watching right now. Yeah, yeah. it is, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. That's uh, crazy. The first comment was Spencer Purcell. So positive, negative, meme, or some mix of all of them. I'm positive because, bro, ninety plus positive, bro. Meme. It's gotta be positive. It's, positive. it's gonna be a cars meme. They were so racy on Sunday. It made the Xfinity race on Saturday look like a train station Danny B would be filming at and uploading onto his Danny B trains channel. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It's a plug. A, a, hey, a at least he plug. knows the channel. Subscribe. It needs more. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen his stuff. It's awesome. At least he knows about the channel. That's what's up. Uh, Alan has a top voted comment that says, that was an all-time classic. I'm glad I got to see that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, the Cloud Creation says, regardless of who NASCAR says won the race, the real winner is the fans. What an amazing race. They really are. Yeah. Everybody won. Yeah. Uh, Twister, tw Twister 1296 says, one of the greatest races of all time. Uh, and Harbor Wilcox says, made up for the end of Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. If you're mad about Daytona, you shouldn't be anymore. See, I'll scroll. I, I'm realizing the gutter comments are going to be so far down. I just have to keep scrolling oh. anytime I'm not reading. Do, That's do, right. Because it's like do, 600 do, plus. Do, do. Yeah. Um, uh, Derek Puma in here says, you had a future Hall of Fame veteran, Kyle, last year's champ, Ryan, and an underdog, Mi Amigo Daniel, Three wide to win it. You couldn't have asked for a more thrilling finish. Just wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, great point. All three. I think there was a, a big storyline to follow with any one of those guys yeah. if they won. Uh, Anthony says modern day Craven got him. Yeah. I mean, it's the closest thing. I feel like like yeah, I mean, yeah. at this point, there's a lot of people in here that were at uh, at thrice. Here's one uh, we didn't talk too much about, but Ross Crash Stain fittingly brings up unhinged Ross is back. Oh, oh yeah, punt man, that's the best out. version of Ross for real. <laughs> Just punted it. I I am all for uh, Ross Chastain versus Hendrick Mafia in the world. I'm all. I for really it. am. It's entertaining, man. Keep it up. <laughs> like I I love it and. and <laughs> Keep wrecking Chase Elliott. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going up. that far yeah, with it. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah, going to yeah. be a hater, but it's just like if I mean, if you could piss <laughs> off Hendrick, a little, Rick Hendrick, a little more, and Jeff Gordon a little more, I yeah. wouldn't mind it. Like I wouldn't I mind it. I just yeah. love that everyone who was involved there because Chastain and Bubba were racing for the lucky dog and then Elliot obviously got spun. They all still finished top 15. In fact, Bubba and Chastain finished like fifth and seventh. Like yeah. it, it worked. <laughs> I, I can't say it worked out for Chase, but it certainly worked out for the others and it didn't hurt Chase too bad. Yeah. Uh, okay. Media Madness says, can't complain as a McDowell fan. Eighth place in a stage win. This team is going to make the playoffs. Hey. Y'all got so lucky because there is no way y'all should have even been sniffing the top ten after that pit road accident. No that's, way. That's a good point. Y'all yeah, got yeah. so lucky. And <laughs> but we can talk about front row for a second, like that yeah. Penske Alliance, that Tier One Ford thing. I, I know it's just super speedways, but McDowell in the front row two weeks in a row in qualifying, and Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen's led more laps this year than anyone else in the Cup Series. <laughs> hey, he like is I'm the saying. current laps leader for the Cup Series after two races. Todd. <laughs> Gilliland. Yeah, like I said last year, bro. Hey, championship contenders by 2030. I'm telling you, bro. The I'm Todd you. father. Uh, <laughs> let's see. B. Wait, Scalise. That's, that's David. <laughs> I'm going to move on from that. <laughs> B. Scalise says, fair play, Marcus. You were right. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I Sorry, gu- <laughs> I guarantee he went on like because I I don't listen I don't listen through the week to too many shows live just because I'm always really busy. I guarantee the entire week Marcus is just patting himself on the back all yeah. week. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't blame him. I don't blame I mean, him. Get, yeah, I got a lot of shit. We did give him a lot of shit. <laughs> well, and I think it was justified like to, mm-hmm. to say that because Atlanta was a love track by many. It was, yeah. Uh, let's – oh, I'm I, I'm definitely getting close to the bottom because I'm seeing words that are very foul. Um, oh. Wow. The gutter. Oh, this race. <laughs> all right. All right. We're down to the gutter. Uh-oh. Racing Good says race sucked too many cautions. It's only ten. That's like okay. That's perfect. He didn't amount, use right? the right two either. So <laughs> oh, never T-O. mind. <laughs> uh, Dean Winchester says pack racing is for children. Hope the kids liked it. Hmm. Uh, well, the kids did. Call me a kiddo because I was entertained. Yeah, I'm a kid at heart. <laughs> and then. Uh, I like this one. Let me read it all the way through before you react, because you you need to hear the full all thing right, to react to it. Daniel here says, "Boring race, stage racing, terrible." I've been watching for sixty years. Haven't watched since Earnhardt. We need Richard Petty back. Okay, sarcasm, obvious. Any other stupid things I can comment for y'all whiners? <laughs> I, I, that's just about done. I think he checked. Mar- I think he crossed all so, the dots and stuff. <laughs> it, I, I like that. I like that the lowest voted comment. You could tell people didn't open to read the rest. or just like, this I'm guy like, hates the race. So, <laughs> so that is, uh, I think that's a great way to end the poll. Even the negative comments were, were uh, the, the negative ones were good. Like, I was about ready yeah. to revoke that guy's sharing of my name. Yeah, for real, for real. And that'll conclude this edition of the Famous Iceberg Poll on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Well, we did have two other races, and I don't think we need to really talk that much about them because... Hey, but... let me let me make fun of the Xfinity okay. race, bro. What choo, was that, choo. bro? Yeah, when choo, I watched the Xfinity choo. race, head over to Danity Trains. I've got the full yeah. on my channel there. That, that sucked. Was, that was such a letdown. Xfinity usually brings the heat. What happened? Let me tell you what happened. The current package we had, for, um, um, uh, excuse me, we have for that track is not working out at the moment, clearly. Clearly it's not. And then for it to come down to fuel mileage, I guess, like, yeah, it did make it more entertaining from that aspect. But then all that for another Austin Hill win. And Jarrett, bro, you, <laughs> oh, my God, picking last. I, I, oh my I God. like, when he went through the middle on that restart, I was like, no you way. You Are you serious? Yeah. I was like, outside I thought, about to sweep the weekend. I thought I was dead to rights. I thought that Love was going to win it. and uh, like that, But poor Jesse Love. Dude led yeah, 157 hey. of 169. Youth versus, youth versus hey. experience. Austin Hill is a veteran. He's like 30 years old. Like He's racing against you know kids in that series now. And that, it's I, there's, I, you saw it in the trucks as well. Kyle Busch made those like 20-year-olds look like rookies <laughs> I mean, they are in a lot of cases rookies you almost see it now with austin hill how good his cars are and how good he is at these types of races like jesse love he'll have his shots this year he's been close two weeks in a row but you know it is it's youth versus experience didn't save enough gas uh, yeah i brought this up in our chat this week and also on twitter uh the two has been in contention to win a lot of races over the last few years but it is still for rcr the two cars not with the victory lane since myatt snyder in early 2021, he is That's the right. last driver to win the two. Snyder. That's I, also right. made, I also made this joke in my skit the other day, but the Xfinity Series somehow booked the exact same race that we saw at Daytona, where Jesse Love gets the pole, leads most laps, shenanigans happen, resulting in Austin Hill winning instead. <laughs> exact same formula. Of course. But in, in Jesse Love's defense, I mean, yeah, you know, if you are trying to save fuel, it is a lot harder to save fuel when you are, you know, in front of the pack there, too. Like, even yeah. Austin Hill said that after the race, like, he's going to get his opportunities in. It mm. might be this weekend. So, no. I, mm. I'm going to put Sweet. a poll out here. Which did you like less? Just because I think we've had a similar reaction to two races that couldn't be any more different. 2024 Daytona Trucks or 2024 Atlanta Xfinity? Oh, dude. Yeah, that's a that's tough a, one. It's a toughie. I'm, I'm that's gonna, a very tough I'm one. I'm going to actually different. say I would dislike the trucks more because at that point they were just wrecking to the point I was getting tired of it. Yeah. Oh, ooh, chat. Ooh, chat's uh, interesting. Damn. Yeah, that's oh. a tough one. 
That's a tough pick. Keeps teeter totting. Okay, now truck truck sucked. I remember, but a part of that was I was just I knew there was an Arca race to coming on after it. (laughs) I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, this is like I don't even want to stay. We weren't watching the Arca race. Hey, what a night though, right? It was was funny because I um I got a text. I was texting back and forth the Daytona truck race with IDK player. And he, and he he stayed for the Arca race, and then they went under red, and he goes, F this, I'm out, I'm not doing this. That's, kind of, that's basically how I was. I think I passed him in the well, parking lot. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he's like, I swear to God, if I see the color yellow ever again, I'm jumping off the top of the grandstands. No. <laughs> I don't blame him, but I mean, I, I'd, that, because I don't know who I'd pick, man. I don't know what I'd pick, because the trucks, even, even the Arca race taken out after the fact, it was just so monotonous. Like at least, at least the Xfinity race ended quicker because nothing happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the thing. It's like, do you want the massive chaos or just the underwhelmingness of Atlanta? <laughs> well, yeah. it's just the Xfinity series is so good too, and then you like you just you have that. It was such yeah. a letdown. Yeah, because I, I, I honestly up. thought I was like, okay, trucks is definitely gonna be the worst race of the day. But then, nah. see, and like I even just was like, let me pull up the finishing results. I kind of forgot who finished where. Like, were there any like fun underdog stories? Not really. Uh, well, no, didn't SVG? Where did SVG? Well, I, if you count SVG, yeah, finishing third, that's interesting. Parker Retzlaff fifth. You know, good start for Jordan Anderson. But racing. other than that, no, but like you, really. Clements in sixth. You know, he's won one of these hey. races before. Alfredo kind of fun in seventh. Jeffrey Earnhardt in eighth. Oh, but then it's Truex, Sammy Smith, okay. Sam Mayer, Jesse Level, yeah. Nigger, Brandon Jones. Like, oh, okay, I will bring this guys. up about Anthony Alfredo. Do you guys? Did you guys see his wreck on uh, Saturday? No one uh, did. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, spinning at the stage. He end or spun at the end of the stage, and it was never mentioned. The only reason I, I knew is because somebody I knew at the track had a video in a group chat I was in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I really, we'll talk about it on Twitter. Really quick question. Uh, get take a wild guess who's currently second in points right now. Just take it's a our wild boy, guess. Sheldon Creed. <laughs> <laughs> he loves second. Yes, second loves to him. nobody else but his former teammate Austin. Yeah, Hill. it's cruel. Oh my that's, God, that's, that's, that's right. so cruel, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know. But, but did um, you see at Daytona? I, I if I remember correctly, after the Daytona race, didn't he go up on the checkered flag and kind of give a little congrats to Austin? Yeah, he Hill? did. That was a yeah. funny thing. That was very yeah. heartwarming. It was yeah. like Andy Petrie trying to like, I don't know, pretend like nothing happened in the booth that night. It's like <laughs> it's like that whole yeah. night was gaslighting us into thinking Martinsville didn't happen. It was yeah, really just, I, I love how he's like, you know, Sheldon Green is such a hard worker. It's like he's such a great team. Yeah, he's such he a great worked, guy. He, <laughs> he was he was really great heading out the, the door and never coming right. back i really like the back the look was of the he, back of his head as he walked out hey, of my office for the final time <laughs> was he really great when you were cussing at him on the uh, martinsville yeah. pit lane <laughs> love to see him leave and love to see him go <laughs> <laughs> but no a hey, good start to him so far we said hey win some races you know but hey you know two races in second in points for two drafting tracks that's not bad you know well, two top i think you, you mentioned jesse love spoiler i think sheldon creed's gonna have a, a, mm. a really solid west coast swing in that jgr car Hey, yeah. don't forget about Herps though. Herps, I mean, like he ran out. Of, well, where'd Herps end up finishing? He, he's he's on my list. He's on my you know, like, yeah. He's on my list. Riley well, Herps finished fifteenth. Oh, okay, okay. So he ran out of gas. That's how, thing yeah. made Cole Custer. Well, that okay. fifteen. That's how many seconds he won Las Vegas by last mm-hmm. fall. <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> don't forget about that. Before we get to talking too much about old Viva Las Vegas, let's talk about the truck race. Uh, Kyle Busch won, and Bailey Curry he he raised the roof. Yeah, what in the heck was going on? I had never seen that. No before. penalty. Yeah, yeah what? Because no, whatever man. evidence probably blew away in the wind. Yeah, right? <laughs> the the yeah nothing to prosecute. Like, nothing left to prosecute. Right? What are you gonna say? A penalty? You're missing a roof. I just, I don't, I don't. Ha- I wish I would have put it in the OBS tonight so I could pop it on screen. There's this picture, and it's just, it's just such a NASCAR picture, and it's the crew guy with a piece of duct tape looking. Completely aghast, jaw on the ground at the roof being gone, and he's just completely unprepared. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> this dude, is so funny. I've been I didn't watching, sign up for this. <laughs> I've been watching since first grade, yeah. 2004, and I had never seen that before. Like, ever. I'm here to change your tires and maybe put some Parabon on your 
quarter panel. I do not know what to do here. Do, do you <laughs> think we could it. talk to Lionel about making a, a race version diecast of that? That hey, would be hey, great. No, but, but for real, uh, in my skit, the only way I could make that joke was I had like a can opener. It was like tapping like the roof of a Jordan Anderson truck. But like, this is the only way I could see it going down. You just take a can opener and start going at the roof. <laughs> But not, nah, but Kyle, but Kyle Busch though. I mean, like that was his first race um, at a uh, drafting track in um, a non-cup series event since his uh, 2015 injury, and he ends I, up winning. So he's he's that good. <laughs> I mean, Kyle yeah. Busch. At this point, we could take a minute to talk about his truck series legacy. At this point, that that dude, it, it don't matter if he owns a truck or not. You just put him in one, and he's gonna know how to do it. I, I, was- I, I already know. I, spoiler alert! I already know who Derry's gonna pick for a truck race. He's he's the yeah yeah we already know kyle (laughs) bush was just showing rev racing how the lawsuit's gonna go yeah and just thinking (laughs) about that too though danny i guess to elaborate more on that because yeah i remember him winning like in back in 2005 at atlanta like coming all the way from the back to the front um in the late going of um that year's truck race in the fall and like yeah he's been winning in the truck series at that track for years man was that the race where like going through one and two he went down on the apron yep that was so badass. Yeah, bro, he's dude, that was 2005. That was Cup Series rookie Kyle Busch, too. So he's been doing this for a while. But yeah, no, nah, I mean, that was expected. It's the Truck Series. It's KFB. What do you expect? Well, I think that covers the weekend. Wow, we are well on track right now covering the weekend wow. there. Um, I, I think that just leads us to the lightning round, right? It's or no, right. no, it does not. Oh, we, got, we got the green and white checkered or wave. That's right. Oh, right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, that was on me that time. Yeah, damn. Yeah. That's a new one. That's, a, that's what yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I, I took Darian's role this week. Yeah. I did not read the itinerary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so someone might get the clock hey, you for me. You're busy. Uh, hosting. I got you. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to go all the way up to the top here. Nass Carson for the 10. Uh, hey, NWP guys. Atlanta Trucks oh. needs to fix the roofs. Xfinity needs to fix fuel issues. Cup saved the race weekend with the best finish of all time with three cars. Boy, did they ever. Yes, yes. Uh, and we also add here from him for five, what other tracks have split start finish lines for scoring uh, who who finished where? I thought I thought once you reach the checkered line first, winner wins. No, I, I, there was mm-hmm. a couple that do it. They're, they're very Is it flashy. the yellow line? I still don't even know. Is it the yellow line in yeah. this case? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, Bailey, Bailey, thank you for the five. Why is SHR's Xfinity team so much better than their cup team? Also, I'm calling it Herps dominates again like he did in the fall. Well, maybe Money. because maybe maybe they might cheat and not get caught. No, <laughs> yeah, no, I think the next gen car is just so radically yeah, different. Yeah, I'm, I'm cup sure series, take it. some take some notes, cup team. Irvin Alvarado, thank you for the five. Noah Gregson minus six points. Meanwhile, my Taco Bell rewards as of today is twenty one eighty points, which hey. is fire status. SHR <laughs> are tank cup series contenders. <laughs> Did y'all see uh, what is it? What is Taco Bell debuting? Aren't they bringing like chicken nuggets to their menu or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say this: if you're like wanting to eat healthy. Taco Bell is a sleeper, man. Like I've been eating healthier and like trying to get back in shape. Man, you get you get a you get a taco instead of like the beef. You put like that grilled chicken on. Take you know maybe maybe put some lettuce on there, and you just have a grilled chicken taco. Really freaking good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. It's so you might good. Be, I'm thinking you might be right. We, we got might taco, seek a second we got opinion Taco Bell on that, yesterday, but... and uh, I think that like just one crunchy taco is only like. Less than 200 calories for one of them. And you, and like you can order the rice and beans, but take the beans off and get the grilled chicken. It's just, it's it's a sleeper, man. People are sleeping on Taco Bell. Be grilled. Just just you know, you, you go to chicken. sleep, you, you cuddle up with your blanket, and they get yeah, grilled is- chicken. And then, <laughs> <laughs> the 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 health podcast. You go, it's you chicken. The trash no, out. It's you chicken. Go, it's craving this- Baja Blast. Get this- the Baja Blast Zero with some chicken. This podcast <laughs> has been built hey. the last two years on chicken. You yeah, know, I get down to the curb, get the mail, open the mailbox, then you get the grilled yeah, chicken. You know, every time we say chicken, <laughs> I'm seeing in the chat, Irvin said Belson. Every time we talk, say the word chicken, someone should record this and just every time it's chicken, you hear the Taco Bell mm-hmm. bell go. 
Yeah, but Nick, man, it is perfect for the toilet. You're right. Well, if 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 you have most of the stuff there, high sodium. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Nixon fishing. Thank you for the five. Uh, you know it's a great race when guys like Kyle Larson says it's some of the most fun he's ever had in a drafting race. I think he said it was some of the most fun he's had just in general. And, and he, he say and that he from wrecked. the infield care center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wrecked. He's wrecked out of every yeah. single Atlanta New Atlanta race. Um, Isaac, thank you for the five. Which is more unbelievable? Front Row Motorsports being more of a championship threat than Stuart Haas or Pitbull as a co-owner has more checkered flags in the past three years than Tony Stewart as a, as a team Oh, owner. I'm going the second one because I've been on Front Row for a while. So no, I'm, I'm still going to go to that first one because I, I think uh, just track house is just an overall built good team. Well, think about it. when Pitbull became you know an, a, an associate or an ambassador of track house, like Stuart Haas was fresh off of Harvick winning half the yeah, races in right. 2020 or 2020, whatever. 2020, so yeah. That's pretty yeah. shocking. Uh, Ross Crastain, thank you for being a new member to the channel. And Alex, thank you for the $5 super chat. I would like to nominate my Corgi, Gordy, as the second animal mascot of NWP. I say secondary because uh-huh. we all know Shugs the Cat is number one. Yes. yes. Yeah. I like that name. That's cu- That sounds cute. <laughs> I, I would say co number two should be uh, Sully the Bearded Dragon or Little Dude. I'll bring, little dude. <laughs> if, we, if we have 500 likes tonight, I'll get I'll go get little dude. Hey, we're 50 uh, away from 400. I was honestly really surprised he said Shugs because I was scared he's going to talk about the other cat. I, yeah, I thought I was thinking Mittens or whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> Mittens is in the chat tonight uh, and, in, and, and in our hearts. Uh, yeah. I'll read a couple more here and then we'll head on over to the lightning round. Uh, David Bell, thank you for becoming a member to the channel and uh, just reset on me. Where'd it go? Beautiful. Oh, that- YouTube, there you go. YouTube being YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and then, let's see, three more here. CBB for the five. If you were Freaky friday into the body of Tony Stewart, I'd rather not. Um, <laughs> what is the first thing you would do to get Stewart Haas Cup teams back on track? No pun intended. Well, well, well first, I'd get the grilled chicken. And- <laughs> <laughs> we could Taco Bell as a sponsor. No, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I'd probably I, I offer somebody really good and really young a ton of money and um, then also call up Honda. I would yeah. see if Cole Pern is willing to come back from his ski vacation. And no, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, maybe probably He's make tell some you, changes. He'd probably tell you about his butt plug. Yeah, I will yeah. go find Carl Edwards and be like, want to drive my car? And then get I, rejected. I love how like <laughs> they get rejected. Here's what I would do. So are you interested in bringing Kevin Harper Incorporated back? <laughs> hey, June, you you want to bring that Dude. cup car up? You want, yeah. you want to have a cup car again? Or like ever? <laughs> do what, what do what do you want to do, buddy? I um, I I want to go drag racing. Yeah. Um, Blake, thank you for the five. The bad news: I missed the finish of the cup race due to work. The good news: two coworkers saw the finish due to social media and asked me about it. Oh, it sucks oh, that hey, you missed it, funny. but I like I like yeah. The, uh, last one here for this Super Chat stage break from Pit Stop Perspectives for five. What advice do you have uh, for someone trying to get into making NASCAR YouTube content? If you feel this is the wrong place to ask, please ignore it. No, no, it's not the wrong place. Um, Just no. give your perspective, whether it's something that uh, that people generally agree with or not. Just well thought out. Put it out there. Put the first video out. That's the hardest one. Make content that you would also enjoy watching and be prepared for people who don't know you to have an opinion about you that you Good know is it true. Good or bad. And, you know, just do what makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. Just have fun with it, man. Just have fun. Yeah. I always just tell people to find something you're uniquely able to talk about. Like if you're an expert about a certain driver or track or if you grew up during a certain era of the sport that you are especially nostalgic or passionate about, whether it's whatever the case may be, I just, you know, find something that you really feel qualified to talk about and start there. And then, you know, try to build build off that. But but like Jared said, just get your first video out there and then like Danny said, be prepared for people to have an opinion one way or another. You just gotta be used to that. I don't mean to make the super chat into a joke, but I mean, no one's ever done a top 10 chicken cars. And then ah. you take the, get the grilled chicken and then you're all set. <laughs> I'm just going to come on next week, like cutting up a grilled chicken and eating yeah. it. I just I need to make about a the way you move your where hands. I just take two of these guys and we, we 
test out the many different chicken places that are in this town we live in. Yeah, Canes I, and uh, the Canes is right next door. I went, uh, spam if you chicken my, uh, emojis in the chat. If you yeah. saw my Twitter, I went to the infamous Raising Cane, uh, Post Malone yeah. built Raising Only Cane's Raising here Cane's in Dallas. doesn't have Tony Brodinger. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all blue Dallas Cowboys and Post Malone themed. It's in Dallas. It's really wacky. You go in, there's yeah. no windows. There's just guitars, Post Malone costumes, a Dallas Cowboys merch vending machine, and it's just blue lights everywhere. Very interesting, but the food, as always, slap. Man, that I feel like the blue lighting in there, it look, makes it look like it's cold. Do they have like really cold AC? Uh, if it was it was pretty comfortable. Yeah. I don't Ooh, know. The weather here's been place, pretty mild lately. I, I would have loved to have been a fly um, on the wall at that place during the Packers game. <laughs> the only the only thing it was missing was grilled chicken. It was all fried chicken. Uh, so what are you gonna mittens do? Mittens is in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But that about does it. Yes, yes, sir. And that's the lightning round of the NASCAR with oh tet stage break. But I don't <laughs> oh, know why we, oh my god! I don't know why we I, lost I, it to Darian. I, was... I I added the lightning effect just because he oh, did it. Oh my that's god! Okay. It was well, natural reaction. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. okay. It was just just a little early. Um, <laughs> Moved up the gun a little bit. That's super chat yeah. stage break. Now what time yeah. is it, Darian? And it's the lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Jared. And it's time for Super Chats. Go ahead, Jared. Read off your Super Chats. <laughs> what do we have on tap for today? You can See, take the know. grilled chicken. Sorry, grilled it's chicken. a reflex. Natural reflex. <laughs> if that no contact Eric Yusef was still doing stuff on Instagram, I would wish that he would do that. And grilled chicken. I just chicken. realized I'm not even <laughs> shitting you. I had grilled chicken for dinner before we started the show. <laughs> <laughs> just realized that. Maybe that's why it's yeah, resonating I just, with me so I well. Just, I have some uh, cooking in a crock pot right now, though. I got that. <laughs> All right. Uh, you go check on it. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the Spotify crowd. I put out a poll seeing how the big talking point last week by many drivers was fixing fuel mileage at Daytona. And it's like, how would you fix it? Uh, 5% said add a fourth stage. Uh, was not popular. 18% said shorten the first two stages. 28% said don't change a damn thing. And 49% said cut out the stage yellows. So shout out to Fair the enough. Spotify crowd on that end. Yeah. Spotify's crowd has been killing it for real. I've been kind of for a while. Uh, in some other news here, when it comes to a new driver in a new ride for this year, uh, Derek Krause will run six cup races this season, starting with Vegas, then Phoenix Spring, Kansas Spring, Darlington Spring, Gateway, and the finale. He'll be in the number 16 for Colleague. Good for him. Good luck. Uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway has made sweeping changes uh, in regards to adding more safer barriers in the short shoots and also upgrading a lot of their catch fencing, uh, probably in anticipation for being back in the Oval for Cup as well as the Indy 500 too. I'm I'm honestly surprised that place they didn't I didn't realize they had non safer barrier. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There. Oh yeah. Yeah. Besides, no, the, they, I guess maybe that. The pit wall entry. I don't and know. And the shoot. Yeah. No, there's a, actually, mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of areas. That there are. I, really I was shocked. Nice. Yeah. When I saw it in person, I was shocked. Uh, at SMI tracks, drivers will now be required to be out signing autographs in the fan zone souvenir trailers throughout the entire season. Every SMI race. That's a good move. I love that. That's what I'm talking about. Because I feel move. like we got to a point, and this no offense to the current drivers, but it, it, it got to a point where it felt like they were hiding from fans. Yeah. Well, I wonder I wonder what authority do they have to force drivers to do that? Like I wonder is there a deal now where drivers merch haulers don't have to spend as much money for the space to sell merch at the race because that's Maybe the that's weird thing deal. about this. Is the tracks charge apparently tens of thousands mm -hmm. of dollars just for Chase Elliott to set up his merch hauler every weekend. So yeah. like maybe there's a hey, we'll waive this fee or to give you a discount if y'all come out here and the driver said, sure, we'll take that deal. Cause there has to be like, that doesn't make sense to me. How do they have the authority to just tell the drivers where they have to be? Like, <laughs> you can't race. If you yeah, don't like, who, Marcus Smith can't, doesn't have that power, but Marcus Smith has been held a lap at the start of race for not going out to sign autograph, to sign Billy's autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Billy from section one Oh seven, please come down to the gateway tunnel. Billy yeah. from section one Oh seven. He has and to now, appear. He has to appear in front of the appeals panel later in <laughs> right. the week. You didn't sign this autograph. Like, like I'm, I'm imagine that's honestly what I could say. You didn't show up. You're getting held a lap at the start. Um, 
Well, in some other news of people getting possibly penalized, Kyle Busch Motorsports is suing Rev Racing for $350,000, citing a breach of contract and unjust enrichment stemming from their truck series partnership. Basically, they, they didn't pay up from what it sounds like because Rev Racing might not have no money, uh, oh, Adam Stern is I, saying. Well, I didn't even day told it two weeks ago. Nick Sanchez, is, isn't he like a Spire truck now, but it still looks like the Rev Racing truck? It's- I think it's Rev Racing, but they have like a deep technical alliance mm-hmm. with Spire. So like Spire yeah. built the truck, most likely, and then it's Rev running the team. Uh, this is this is again not big enough for us to make a whole segment out of, but something we need to talk about or at least have out there. NASCAR is uh, looking to extend the charter system for seven years to kind of be concurrent with the new media rights deal, according to Adam Stern as well. Which, um, Mr. Stern, I, I appreciate the news, but stop tweeting this shit during the races. <laughs> hey, he he knows what exactly what he's doing. <laughs> the algorithm's hot. Put it out there. Yeah, he put out a video today too. I'm like, oh gosh, Stern on video. That's right. Yeah, I, he does he have a YouTube fun. channel now? Pop up the yeah, video. Yeah. Oh, wait, know. he does. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, oh, wait, no, no, no. My bad. No, no. I'm sorry. No, it was on Twitter. It was on Twitter. I'm about to say, Darren, you yeah. ain't. You're no, on no, one no. tonight. Yeah, you're off a news like Stern. No, no. I was about to say. I was like, wait. wait. I was like, Eric, he has a YouTube channel. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't. <laughs> Uh, the Lego group has basically said, I saw this on some Reddit threads as well as some other people that work for Lego saying that they're, they all know about William Byron's fandom and say that it might lead to a future partnership for both Byron and Legos. That, that, that would be great. That'd be an awesome. Matt Lego Weaver. Kid friendly, family friendly brand. That'd I be mean, big. that's like the perfect car anyways, because they're already well known for the yellow uh, number anyways and, and a red car so it just fits mm-hmm. in so good yeah and the um that nascar 75th lego set was a chevy camaro so they have some agreement or relationship with chevy to begin with so that helps uh the srx car will be part of the new iRacing racing release as well as it's looking like i've been seeing a lot of updates uh rain being added to iRacing racing fully Ooh. so Oh, that's gonna yeah. be some fun stuff. Like, Can I, we leave it there. <laughs> I, I mean, I think something cool that would be like if you're doing an eye racing event, but like you just have like crazy weather and like a rain can hit at any time. You don't yeah. know when it's gonna end. You have the urgency. Like, we're not doing that for NWP 400, but I'm just saying <laughs> it would be really cool. Uh, the uh, 2025 Daytona 500 date has been announced. It is February 16th. Uh, the score to Bob Pockers. He had to delete the tweet because he erroneously tweeted that the summer race was going to be on a Sunday night. And it was just, no, it was put on the same weekend as it is now. They don't have the official date, just the weekend. Uh, but I thought that was funny. Um, it would be another Saturday night race going away if that happened, leaving Bristol as the sole survivor. Uh, two others, and then, uh, well, yeah, actually, there are two others before we have a few announcements talking about uh, where we'll be next week in guests before we get into the next segments. Uh, big one here, the 1700 Motorsports Xfinity ride is back for 10 races this year. Willie B will be in the car at Phoenix in a few weeks, Darlington in the spring, Pocono and Watkins Glen. Larson will be in the car at Coda and the Chicago Street Race. Uh, Elliott will be there at the Charlotte Oval Race and and the Summer Darlington Race at the end of uh, the summer in August. Late um, August, yeah. Bowman will be in the car at New Hampshire, and Boris said, "The said heads rejoice. Boris is back. He'll race at Sonoma. Hopefully, he actually gets to race this time." If, if I can, if I can add one more thing to that, since I don't think I don't think we said it uh, on a note of HendrickCars.com cars, uh, they announced that they will be on every other race this season with Raja Crew. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um. The Intimidator roller coasters have been renamed to Thunder Striker. Um, so, it's not a bad name to replace it. The Wicked but, Witch of the South strikes again. Yeah, Darian, that's have, my, you, have you ridden the? Because I mean, that's my childhood, bro. Yes, oh, so I, you're damn it? right. Yeah. I've ridden it. I've ridden it so many times, dating back to when it first opened, 2010. Dude, now it's gonna be something else. It's still gonna be by and large the same roller coaster, but dude, come on! Like it had like the gentleman starts your engine, they would go you're, up. You're, and then, the roller coaster vehicle was like a black number three. Yeah, car. Like, it dude, was so cool. It felt like you were riding a bullet, man. Oh, it was yeah. great. I don't know. I don't know how much they're gonna change with it, but thanks a lot, Teresa. Always gotta ruin everything. Slowly but surely, wanting to I, save the uh, legacy of Dale Earnhardt by chipping it away. 
I feel like I could do a great skit about that, but I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Well, yeah. more than well, likely, it was just a licensing deal ran yeah. out. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Teresa or whoever jacked up the price to renew. I don't know. But mm. wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't uh, surprise. Well, that, for the most part, ends the lightning round. But before we get to the very finish of it, next week, uh, just a reminder for those who might not say the whole show, uh, Danny B Talks will be the channel we're on. He will, Danny will be hosting uh, the the podcast. And we do have a little more to talk about when it comes to future podcasts. Uh, we actually, the next three weeks, will have guests back again. Woo! So Woo! Yes. Next week, we'll have Thad Moffat on the show, March 6th. Uh, our buddy Jet's going to be coming on on Eric's channel, March 13th. And on Darian's channel, March 20th, Ellie Productions will be on the show. So Ooh, March 20th. Yes. I feel like if we have Jet on in a couple of weeks, we need to talk to him about his – Get he can get some insight to the audience here of his editing process because, you know, he's the one who put together the intro for this show for the last few years and – if you want to hear some stuff about editing, you might want to hear from him too. For sure. Yeah. And I see that the uh I see the chat is very, very happy. Mm -hmm. Uh but that that's gonna cover it for the lightning round this week. There we go. Now it's my time. And that'll conclude this edition of the famous lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. And now back to the show. All right, we do have one segment to go before we get to a lot of our uh, fun segments. By the way, because uh, I don't have the likes up at the moment just because I was in the, the OBS side of things. 15 away. 15, 15 away, away from 400. Like button, yeah. We're going to get there. They can yeah. get there. All right. Well, we do have one other big storyline. There were some penalties that were assessed and not assessed this past week. Let's start with the the really quick one that we can kind of brush by. Old glove gate, Joey Logano. Uh, yeah. moved to the rear, saved his race early on before Joey Joey'd it. Uh, <laughs> that was more of a handling thing than anything. No points, penalties. There's not really much to break down, I think, on this end, other than it's pr we're pretty confident he did that at Daytona. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other one here is that the 10 and the 41 cars had their roof air deflectors removed from their cars. Uh, I believe prior to qualifying, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 35 driver owner points have been docked from both of them. And this is the third year in a row, I think, that uh, the, in the next gen era, a Ford team has been hit with a big penalty at Atlanta. And thank you guys for 400 likes, by the way. And oh my gosh, storehouse racing. I was the most positive about you, but I'm about to jump off the train and we're only two races in y'all. just Y'all y'all are making my stomach churn, man. Seriously. Y'all y'all keep getting caught cheating and you're slow. It would be something if you're not slow, but you're consistently slow and you're still getting caught cheating. Like, why are you cheating? It's not working. It's rough. I mean, Jared mentioned three straight years of Ford has been dinged at Atlanta. This is at least the fourth pretty major penalty Stuart Haas has been hit with since the next gen was introduced. Harvick was hit with one uh, towards the end of 2022. Obviously, last year, Chase Briscoe got hit with the L3 120 point penalty early in the year. And then at the end of the year, Harvick got disqualified at Talladega. Um, and I'm not even counting. Remember 2022 and Cole Custer got like a 100 point penalty or something for manipulating the finish of the Roval race. Mm -hmm. you know, Stuart Haas just cannot stay out of their own way. And that's why, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly. We know Greg Zipadelli's in like the head competition role over there and has been for a long time. And he's great. He, going back to his days as a crew chief, he was obviously fantastic in that role. And he's been in a major position of power at Stuart Haas throughout their championship seasons with Stuart, with Harvick. So I'm not saying the dude's, you know, unqualified for the job, but at some point between Zipadelli, many of the other folks they have in charge there, I just want to see changes. It's clear. It was clear out the gate in 2022 that the team did not wrap their hands around this next gen car very well. Harvick won a couple of races in the late summer, but and Briscoe got that one, but it was clear the team wasn't what they once were. When things got even worse in 2023, I thought that would be the straw that breaks the camel's back and Tony Stewart, Gene Haas would come in and make major off-season changes. Instead, they changed the logo. They changed the team logo. That was it. They and lost they were talking. 
Yeah, Uh-oh. they lost a Hall of Fame driver. They lost major sponsors. You know, with all due respect to Josh Berry, to Noah Gregson, they're not replacing Kevin Harvick and Eric Almirola, at least not anytime soon. And as far as I know, they made no significant leadership changes. Zipidelli's still in the same role. It's like all the people who've been making the mistakes the last two years are still there this year. So of course they're going to get hit with another major penalty that puts them in a deep hole early in the season. Like, I guess we should have seen this coming from a mile away. If it's broke, fix it. And they haven't fixed it. So that's why I'm just, I, that's why I've been doubting this team all off season. And, you know, I hate to feel like I've been proven right, but so far I've been proven right. I'm not rooting yeah. against SHR. I'm just pointing out the obvious. They're not making the changes they need to make to stay or become competitive again. And it's frustrating. Yeah, they really aren't. And it also doesn't help when, you know, you've been basically talking shit all off season, you know, coming off <laughs> of one of the worst seasons. And, you know, I was like for it at first. I'm like, all right, you know what? Hey, they feel confident, you know, good for them, but you better be ready for what comes, you know, with it, you know, good or bad. And so far, two races in, basically half of your team hasn't even started the season. Yeah. You know, Ryan Priest now has zero points. Noah Gregson now has negative six. So basically those two races, boom, gone. Your season hasn't started yet. So (laughs) I I know this is probably redundant to ask. They must win now. Like, is the the rest of the season just must win? Yes. Yes, for those two probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, honestly, I'll go as far as the whole team now at this point, just to just to you know just to just to show a little something, you know, because again, we are so not all for these playoffs, students. just just for morale. Just morale, yeah, just for morale. You better be up there at least competing for one of these playoff wins or for one of these super speedway wins, but must win the rest of the season, in my opinion. Briscoe and Barry, I'm not going to write off just yet because we haven't even seen them in an intermediate. You just never know. Maybe this new Ford is going to be really fast at the short tracks and intermediates. Yeah. You really never know. But no, in the case of Gregson and Priest, kind of just what we expected from them coming in, they're both now 40, 50 points outside of the playoffs and they have 20-something drivers they got to beat. I think they are virtually in must-win territory, but I would argue they might have been in must-win territory to start the year. You know, So that, it's, yeah. that doesn't change a whole lot. It's just, it's just demoralizing because like we've been saying they they rebranded in the offseason i actually liked some of the leadership qualities tony stewart showed rallying the troops you know he, he was speaking in front of everybody saying hey that's not who we are we're going to show the world who we really are this we're year. racers good we're Great racers. stuff. good stuff so it's just demoralizing to see them run into these issues two weeks into the season man it's just it sucks i i, I hate this- it for them it's just annoying, like them basically trying to call their own shot way before the season ever started. And it's like, okay, but can you be more realistic? You just went off of probably your team's worst season ever. And now you think a rebrand is just going to magically fix this? And now we already see what the seasons look like. Yeah, two races in. Bold and unapologetic, at least. Bold and unapologetic. <laughs> no it's going to take a lot more than a new logo to change things. Here. Yeah. Whatever you're doing in Xfinity, sure, keep that. But hey, keep that up. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I think I think that Cole Custer, up. Cole Custer will save the program. Promote him, <laughs> Riley Hurst. Riley Hurst. Riley Haley Hurst. Deegan. Deegan. Yeah. Change his name to Ry- uh, Wiley. Riley with a W. Wiley Hurst is going to yep. save the program. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> <sighs> well, I think about again about covers it. Shall we, uh, before we get to the random driver of the week, since I see we hit 400, should we, uh, let's get to our predictions and all. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's Let's do it. it. All right. So really quick for anyone who's new, a quick reminder for you, uh, for the prediction segment, each host will make up to three NASCAR motorsports or in some way show related predictions. Uh, We keep track of these each week with the right or wrong predictions in our accountability session. And please try to keep, The predictions, concise, have them make sense, be within two to three years of the prediction if they're long-term, and just let's not have too many layups because that just isn't fun. Yeah, I, I like it's fun. We're dumb enough to actually keep track of, of who's wrong. So first up, I'll go on the accountability board here. Nothing came off the board for me. Mm. So, mm. yay. As for Eric... Eric has a bit of a mixed bag, but the Atlanta truck race will have more cautions than one of the other Cup or Xfinity races. He got that right. Uh, he did. Yeah. He did get wrong that Brad Keselowski or Corey LaJoy would bump someone in Atlanta, causing a big wreck. They uh, were in Corey, big wrecks. Keselowski spun out in front of the. I guess you're right. That's not quite what I was. <laughs> yeah. Guessing. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad wording. 
Uh, <laughs> as for Darian, Darian had a great week. Ooh, First off, let's I get did. the bat out of the way right off the bat. He said Sheldon Creed would have his ninth runner-up finish. Didn't happen, but mm, he close. nailed the finish. So he said there would be 10 or fewer cautions in the Atlanta Cup race. There were 10. On the oh dot. Oh, I forgot about this second yeah. prediction. Holy yeah. crap. He said Daniel Suarez will contend for the lead on the final lap. And oh. dang. Dude, he didn't have to contend. I should wow. have freaking just picked him to win, looking back. <laughs> that's that's crazy. It yeah. is. Uh, now, Danny. Danny finally got on the board this week. He said Ford will not win a race in the Atlanta Triple Header weekend. He was correct. I got that right by that much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he was correct. He did say the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series would have the fewest cautions of the Atlanta weekend. That was not uh-huh. right. So, guys, let's look at our uh, our if I can find the prediction percentage we have here. New prediction percentage. Darian is 50-50 on the year. Uh, Grace be leading good. in something. <laughs> uh, Eric is in second with 37.5% correct on the prediction board. I have a third Ooh. of mine right, and Danny is at 20% now on the year. Okay. So we're doing pretty nice. good. I, I'd say generally pretty good. Um, yeah. 50% from the field, I'll take it, from three. Un- unlike our pick segment for the race, I don't think that there's any real advantage of order. So let's just go in points order on this one for now. All so right, Darian, no. lead us off. What is what does your divine wisdom say about the finish this week? Yes. Well, well, I'll start off with, you know, I'll keep it in the motorsports realm, but it's not about NASCAR. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Formula One kicks off this weekend with the Bahrain Grand Prix. Um, so don't bold you dare say here. Max Verstappen's going to win. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Max Verstappen's going to win every race this year oh. <laughs> every race no 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 and i know i sound crazy to some of y'all now but no Ooh. if y'all been paying attention to the preseason testing that car had basically zero tire wear zero if, it was on like rookie mode i mean though, i like, might joke and say that but no i'm gonna I mean, no i'm actually, dead how, how many how many did he win last year 19 yeah yeah so crazy, he only yeah. just won a few more yeah so and there's a uh 23, 24 races on the schedule. I just, think it's realistic. I'm crazy stuff could happen. If this happens, I we could say this now. This is not prediction. If this happens, I will buy you a 24-pack of Corona. <laughs> what, what, watch him do almost every single one in the last race of the season. Something goes wrong, and Hamilton finally wins. Or, no, or no, he no, no. doesn't win a race in the first yeah. race of the weekend. Or no, watch it. Watch it be like Las Vegas, my home track, of course, and just something happens there, or you just he or um he just blows an engine this week, something crazy. But no, I'm gonna go with it. Perfect season for Verstappen. Lock it in. And, and I just realized you you might have just really cursed him bad. <laughs> Maybe. Eric, what you got on yours? So uh, half of Stuart Haas was penalized this week. My first prediction is that the rest of Stuart Haas, either the four or the 14, will get hit with an L1, L2, or L3 penalty at some point this year. I could say it. Yeah. Does that count as a layup at this point? <laughs> I mean, it's well, not a guarantee, but I could say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say it's, this. It's not, like a, it's not necessarily like a loose wheel or some other. It has to be an L1, L2, or L3 specifically. Okay, okay. I'll say this for mine. I'm going to keep the positivity train going right now. I will say by my birthday, November 1st, that maybe not standing room only, but seating wise, the 2025 Daytona 500 will be sold out. Mm. Yeah. When did it sell out this year? It sold out around then, didn't it? Around like end of October, start of November, somewhere in yeah. there. And, you mm-hmm. know. It, it's difficult to see because each year, but they've been selling out sooner and sooner. I think I think it's going to happen before November 1st. Before yeah. or on, I should say, yeah. All right. We were talking uh, a little bad about this guy earlier, but I'm actually going to say Joey Logano gets three or more wins this season. Hmm. That's my reaction like every prediction is. Mm. Mm. Fascinating. Hmm. <laughs> Darian. Mm, nah. <laughs> um, okay, so for the second one, um, you know, with the whole alliance and with uh, Penske being so great at Las Vegas, I'm going to say Todd Gillen gets a top five. I like that. That's mm. fun. Damn. That's a good one. Uh, my prediction's not nearly as fun. I kind of hope it doesn't come true. But I, my prediction is that a Cup Series regular, and this includes Eric Almarola, will win every race this weekend. 
Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to be in the same vein, I think, in a degree with that. I'm going to say for the first time this year in at least one of the races, a Chevrolet will not be the winner. Chevy has won every NASCAR race in the top three series so far this year. And I think it's going to stop mm. at Vegas. That, okay. That's fair prediction. Hey, that. Um, speaking of Chevrolet, though, I'm going to say that by July 31st, at least three-fourths of the Hendrick cars will have a win. I don't know which ones, but at least three-fourths of them will have a win by July 31st. Mm. Well, there will, one of them's done already. I bet, I, Danny, who, which one's – come on, you, we know who the odd one out is going to be, right? You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Is it off the, that's off the record. Yeah. <laughs> Danny oh, in our group chat earlier was already trying to put Raja Karuth in the 48. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like damn. Already. Oh, give him give him a little bit more time to uh, develop, Danny. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll still I'll still support Alex wherever he goes. Yeah. All right. So for my last prediction, um, I'm going to say uh somebody scores their first career victory in either one of the top three series this weekend anybody so that means anybody from any of the series racing at vegas this weekend i think one of them first career win so does that mean you're gonna have one of those as your pick this weekend mm-hmm. uh, i think shane van gisbergen scores a top 10 at his intermediate traditional intermediate xfinity series debut All right uh, i have not seen if this has happened uh but seeing how this is a very trendy thing to do and and if it has happened i'll make a different prediction that way it's not just a layup of something that's already happened by the green flag of the cup race on Sunday. At least one Hendrick motorsports driver on Twitter will have followed icy vert. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I could say, I could see it being Bowman or Byron to do it. Yeah. I, I, it won't be chased. Does he even have his Twitter login? <laughs> I feel like, I feel like he'd do it. And then someone would find out, and just like the Livy Dunn thing, he'd undo it. Yeah, just delete <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delete it later. I'm I'm last on this one. Uh, my last one is that Riley Herbst will get the pole award for the Xfinity race this weekend. Nice. nice. Okay. Unless they don't get the pole. <laughs> All right. Well, there's our uh, there's our predictions for it, and uh, we hit the 400 like mark. So. Uh, Let's do this right before we get to the Vegas weekend, our random driver of All the right. week segment. Woo. Turned off right here. Phone's yeah. off. Um, Screen's off as well. Um, not looking at the chat. Sorry, just chat. See, just to show proof that my screen is off, take a look how, at uh, how late I am now. Turn it off. It's gone. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just proof. So, yeah, you can't. Yeah. I've beaten the accusations. <laughs> Why can I not? My, my my chat won't go away. There we go. Okay, we're good. <laughs> don't don't cheat on me, Step. All don't right. cheat on me. <laughs> Jared already warned us that this is a very obscure driver this yeah. week. Yeah, so I might as well sit this <laughs> one out. We struggled with Joe Cobb last week. Oh man, <laughs> we struck. No, we didn't really struggle. You got was it Jimmy Johnson the week before that? that you yeah. Were able to get yeah, yeah, with yeah. Some He's really like, vague clues. That one, I was like, all right, I I, I might be onto something here. All right, uh, let's start this one out here. This random driver has raced across the top three series any of them at any given time from the early 1980s through the early 2010s. Oh, been around a long time. That narrows it down a little. That been around the way, been around the way a little bit. It narrows it down to three or four decades. (laughs) Well, well, but who the very few span that many decades, even in racing, you know, this random driver's only fully completed season in any series was in the 1994 Winston cup season. God, never. Then this did. Wait, wait, wait. I'm the wheels are turning. Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> this random driver has one career win in both Cup and Xfinity. Okay. Ooh. One career win in Cup and Xfinity. Okay. Okay, keep going, keep going. I, I'm, I'm just. I'm also looking at the chat too. <laughs> this random driver's first career Cup start was at the same track of their only career Cup win. Uh, they also raced in the Winston, now called the All Star Race, from 1986 to 1989. Uh, this random driver led the second most amount of laps at restrictor plate tracks in 1990, only beat by Dale Earnhardt. It's been a while since I rewatched the 1990 season, I must say. All right. All right. 
All right. This random driver's only social media that I could find was Facebook. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Right. I'm going to take my first guess here. All right. All right, here we go. Bobby Hillen? Nope. Oh, all right. All right, two to go. This <laughs> random driver, now this is not all the teams he's drove for, but has drove for Dygard, Hendrick, Junior Johnson, Bud Moore, Kale Yarborough, JR Motorsports, and Front Row Motorsports. At different times. Oh, I think I know it. I think oh, I know it. Go. Is it Greg Sachs? Yes. Yes. I did it the got Junior one gave it away. <laughs> I, soon as I remember it. him being in that race when Junior won at Daytona in the three car. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well done, Danny. Well done. It looks like Good y'all job. got it about the same time the chat did. Maybe they got it. Dude, for you. as soon as he said that. Surprised I got that one. If it wasn't for the Junior Motorsports, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. Oh, all right, good one. Because he is one. by far the most obscure junior motorsport driver there ever was, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Danny is on the board. Let's Finally. go. Finally. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Good job, Danny. That's you the quickest quick anyone's gotten it. That was uh, mm-hmm. eight. That was pretty impressive. GT Vodka Car. I know Eric Amarola drove that one the most, but he was the – that was his company, I think. He, he He's the way he It was – and also, it was just so random to me that, like, Junior, he wins in the three, and then you just had him randomly driving the 88 to, like, P20 or something. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was up front in the top 10 for a good part yeah. of that race. He was for a little bit. But, yeah, no, good job, Danny. Yeah, good job getting it. Hey, we got it quick this time. Hey, there he goes. Look at us. Let's go. Getting getting better. And, with- and I couldn't remember Jennifer Joe Cobb, and I even mentioned the girl <laughs> who tweeted last week. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what? Some some you get, some you don't. I I'll have to uh I'll have to go crazier next week. I already, I already have the driver in mind I'm gonna have mm. for next week. So okay, okay. It's gonna be really interesting when we have guests in here too, if they can oh, guess. Them. Mm. That's right. mm. All right. Well, let's get to well, not Atlanta. And that's the one part of the itinerary I did not uh update. The Las Vegas weekend coming up. One note to look at, uh, there will only be 32 trucks in the field, the smallest entry list since before the uh, pandemic. So oh, wow. there is yeah. that to look at. Uh, as for the race weekend, we'll go in chronological order here. The truck race is the Victoria's Voice Foundation 200. 134 laps, 30, 30, 74 is the stage lengths, 9 p.m. Eastern time start. Uh, they'll be on FS1 and the Fox Sports app, as well as MRN and Sirius XM Radio. Defending winner of this race is Kyle Busch. Weather looking pretty clear, a little windy, 2% chance of rain, and in the low 70s. Um, I don't know what the hell the Xfinity race is called. It's, I think, the Luna? It's uh, L- whatever that Tyler Ankrum sponsor is. Yeah. yeah. But look, if you look on NASCAR.com, it just says the Luna or whatever the hell it is. Oh, Luna, it doesn't even Luna. have like a number? No. Oh. That's the crazy part. Like, it just <laughs> yeah, says just, that. That's the that you know. So <laughs> that'll be 200 laps, 45, 45, 110 the stage lengths. 5 p.m. Eastern time is the start time of it on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. And PRN and Sirius XM will, will be the radio. Uh, Austin Hill defending winner. Could he win three in a row? We may know soon. Uh, 64 degrees with heavy winds and passing showers. 64% chance of rain Saturday, unfortunately. Uh, and then the Penzo 400 on Sunday for the Cup Series, 267 laps, 80, 85, 102. Uh, that is the stage lengths for that one. 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, the start on Fox and the Fox Sports app, PRN and Sirius XM uh, covering that one on the radio side of it. Sunday will be about 60 degrees as a high, sunny but very windy, 7% chance of rain. William Byron, your defending winner of that race as well. Speaking of winners, Darian, who uh, who should we be betting on this week? Oh, yes, sir. Well, now the odds on favorite by far, Kyle Larson enters this weekend as at plus 400, while in second, his teammate William Byron is only plus 850, tied with Denny Hamlin as well. And then Ryan Blaney and Christopher Bell round out the favorites at plus 900. Best of the rest is Tyler Reddick at plus 1,000 with Martin Trex Jr. Kyle Busch is plus 1,200. Chase Elliott plus 1400, followed by Ross Chastain at plus 1500, but also tied at plus 1500 in the underdogs category is, with Ross Chastain is Joey Logano. Brad Kozlowski is plus 1800, Bubba Wallace plus 1900, Chris Buescher plus 2200, tied with Alex Bowman. Now, speaking of uh, other rankings, our fantasy league. So now um, the way we're going to track it is a lot, it's, um, it's a lot different. I'm going to combine all three leagues 
and 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 report the top five um, for each week. And maybe depending on how much you guys like it, maybe we can improve it to uh to the top ten, maybe someday. Who knows? But currently in P one with four hundred and five points and is the NWP Cup Series leader, Jake Titan on YouTube. So hey. 400 points um, after two super speedway races. That's awesome there. And then in well second, uh, this name here, he is the truck series points leader for NWP Fantasy League. In second with 379 points, not Brian Vickers' wife. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. And then in P3, currently second in the truck series points is Apex Man with 374. In fourth, uh, second in the cup series points is fastest chicken in the South with 368 and finally, rounding out the top five, third in the Cup Series standings. Yeah. Um, fifth, with 360 points, Chase Elliott's personality powered by AI. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and also, if you guys didn't notice yet, uh, not a single Xfinity Series member is on there because the points leader for that series has only 344 points. That barely cracks the top 10. So think of this as like a soccer tier series, okay? So, hey, if you don't win, at least get the strength of your league up. So, and also what helps is, is that the other two leagues are full. There are still 20 positions left uh, in the Xfinity series. So join that up while you can. So, yeah. And the last little bit of predictions and league we got is... The pick points, popping them up right here. Danny has the lead still with 49 points. Chap barely holding on to second, minus 14. I have the tiebreaker on Eric at the moment, minus 15 apiece for both of us. And Darian is in the basement, 20 hey. back. And here is Danny with his belt. Yeah. College hey. right. Hey, hey, still there. Still lurking. Hey, I'm still good with it. One one of my big predictions yeah, was that Eric Danny would, prediction on the line for he would still be leading after Phoenix. So yeah. just two more weeks, Danny. Hang in there. Yeah. You know what's and then I can go down, right? Yeah, yeah then you're out of it. But yeah. You know what's crazy is I have I'm tied with Darian for most truck wins and I have most Xfinity wins now. So yeah. uh, I'm gaining the tiebreakers, like slowly but surely. But I I did this last year. if you remember last year, I think I had four or five Xfinity win picks in a row to start the year. And then fell off a cliff. <laughs> but right now, like since we came out of the clash, Jared was 15 points behind me because he got zero points. That's that's the difference maker right there, essentially, to for him being behind me. Just yeah. saying, I'm on my game this year, man. It, it's gonna be I, I I'm gonna be Scott Riggs in 2006, but better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to those picks, starting with the truck series. Darian, this is unfamiliar yeah, territory for you. Thankfully, Jared doesn't get the first pick this time. That yep. gives us all a break here. Thankfully, I do. KFB, Kyle Busch, please save me. On my earlier prediction, a cup guy is going to win every race. Won't be Kyle Busch. It'll be Christopher mm -hmm. Bell. He's in the one. I saw that. Well, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I would have picked them. But since they're out, I'm going to take Nick Sanchez. And chat, remember, you can't take Kyle Busch now, or Bo, or Sanchez. So, who do we got so far? Are they going to take Ty Dillon Heim. again? A couple uh, for Heim. I'll just say this right now. My third pick behind Bush and Bo is still on the table. I think it's Corey Heim. I just saw five in a row. Four yeah, in a row. yeah, it's Heim. It, it's Heim time. Yeah. It's Heim time. So, Danny, was that your third? No, that was my number five. My number three is also a cup guy in a truck race, Zane Smith. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. And, you know, the team he's with, you know, we've seen Christian Neckes winning that equipment. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Darian, who's going to win the Xfinity race? Well, to stay true to my earlier predictions here, um, I'm going to go with the hot hand. I feel like this kid's the real deal. I feel like now we are at a talent based track for sure. Jesse Love is a NASCAR Xfinity Series winner. And I'm the first pick, too. So I'm, I'm practicing what I preach, bro. I think he'll win. All I think right. he's got okay. it. Okay. Well, any of my five, I'm just saying that. <laughs> I, I like that Jesse Love pick, but I, I don't see it happening this week. I, I'm going to go with a cup guy once again, John Hunter Nemechek. I think those are good. Uh, I know this equipment did well last year. I think the a different driver will win in it this year. I'm going to go Cole Custer. Mm. Who do we got in the chat? Let's see. I can't pick Cole Custer. 16. Oh, I saw a couple of 97s. Wait a minute. 98. Oh, 98. I've seen a lot of Herbst, I think. Oh. Should I make a poll? Some Austin Hills, right? I, I think it's Herbst. It's Herbst. Yeah, it's Herbst. It's Herbst. Yeah, it's Herbst. And 
That was my number one pick. So my number three is someone I will gladly ride with going for three in a row, Austin Hill. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't think we need to have all the differences on the next two. We don't do that. So, uh, Darian, who's going to suck in the cup race? Uh, storehouse racing, of course. I'm going to go with Noah Gregson. <laughs> <Sorry. team>. yeah. <laughs> Instant. Uh, Are we let him do that. Can we just say the whole team? But I mean, we the could all team. pick the whole team if we wanted different uh, different picks. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> I'm going to go. No, I'm going to pick on this poor guy because he's just had nothing go his way. Although he, his finish in the cup race at, in Atlanta was actually, I don't think, terrible. I'd have to go back and look. But he's been involved in an incident in the first five laps of both races. That's Harrison Burton. Now, uh, that one seems really easy this year. Another one that seems pretty easy when it comes to get caught, uh, getting caught up in wrecks that aren't of his own making, Carson Hosevar. Yeah. Yeah. Burton goes 11th this last weekend, so he did come back despite the yeah. early damage. Uh, I've seen a lot of – I mean, there's a lot of them in the chat, but I think the most I've seen is 10s for Noah. Yeah, yeah. Noah. <laughs> Easiest pick. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go – I'm going to go with uh, Ryan Priest on this one, actually. Uh, who's our dark horse, Darian, for the cup race? Oh, I, I said he's I, – I think he'll get a top five. Todd Gillen. I'm feeling him right now. I'm feeling him, man. Uh, I think he still counts as a dark horse, even though he's top five in points. Uh, Bubba Wallace, he had a top five here in the spring last year. I'll be completely real with you guys. I did all my research for the win picks and didn't even, I completely forgot about the sucking dark horse pick. So I'm just throwing darts at a dartboard Wing at this it. point. <laughs> uh, um, uh, what's playing to the meme? McDowell supremacy. Um, coming off a good finish. I feel like he's in, he's in year three. With, in my opinion, what should be the flagship car of this team, and he needs to be getting more. So I'm actually going to go with Austin Cendrick to have a good race. I like that pick. I actually yeah. thought about that one. On uh, the chat, chat. I think I've seen a lot of Bowman. Do we count Bowman? I mean, he's been competing up front every year. I mean, he hasn't won a race in two years at this track. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He's a new dog. But, but how many tracks has he won at? Hey, he missed the playoffs <laughs> last year. Hey, and he was, he was he was hurt. I get two. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I'm, I'm an underdog. I'm, okay, we'll give him Bowman, but I just want to, on the record now, I am not on this Bowman hate train that y'all are on. <laughs> they're, they're picking him to do good. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't won in two years. If you're a dark horse, it's not necessarily like you're always expected to do good then. We'll see how he runs. All right, we got one last segment. It's fitting that Darian will lead it off. Darian, what do we got next? Yes, sir. It's time for who's going to win and who's going to win at Las Vegas. Me. <laughs> no. All right. So um, I am in the basement right now. I already picked Bush to win trucks. Jesse Love to win cup was, you know, a bit of a stretch. But hey, you know, I'm, I'm sticking to what I said earlier. But I'm going to go with the odds on favorite. Hey, plus 400. Can't beat him. Kyle Larson. I'm going to take Damn. him off the board. So far, every round, you have picked my second guy. So I've been able to get my first pick. Oh, in first two I, oh please don't pick who I think you're going to. Oh, no. Uh, so I got to go with my plan B here. Let's hope it doesn't fail me. Christopher Bell. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know David Bell loves that. <laughs> oh, man. I, oh, man. Damn. Ah, man, I oh, damn. I have, a man, my my number, chicken. <laughs> I have a feeling my number one is not being taken. Uh is it Kyle Bush? Because that's who I'm taking. No, he's my number four. All right. All right. Who uh, do we got? Chat, I think Mo- they're screaming Byron. And movement yeah. says Movement says Derek Cross. <laughs> 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 hey, good, good luck to him though. Good luck to him though. Um we'll get but Byron. I'm seeing yeah, yeah, Byron. Byron. Yeah, that's easy pick, Byron. All right, Danny. My, pick. my number one pick. No way. Finished really good here last year in the two races that we ran. He won on a similar track to this one. He also finished the season very strong by winning, and now we get back to real racing. Ross Chastain is going to go to work and get that win off the momentum of Trackhouse's first win of the season. Yeah. Ross okay. Chastain was always my number one. Okay, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. Danny got his guy, you know. Yes, he didn't did. Have to, didn't have to trade up for it. Yeah, that's, that's, to, a, that's what we should do. We should we should have trades. Like if one week, <laughs> like, yeah, I really want to have the first pick. I can make some sort of deal. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll give you the first pick, but you give me uh, six well, points. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah, to yeah, trade for yeah. points because if you're willing to sacrifice points to me for what you're gonna gain, 
That's crazy. That could be <laughs> like, be hey, crazy. if you give me the first pick, Darian, I'll give you two of my points. <laughs> the the <laughs> chat will be the only one at disadvantage, so yeah. who cares? <laughs> or or we could also do uh if if you want my if you want a first pick, I can pick for you for Xfinity or Truck. Because that's kinda like trading picks. Oh, maybe I see. Like, hey, yeah, okay. okay I'll okay. trade you next week's first pick. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Congrats, you're you're picking. Jarrett, uh, Jarrett, you're picking you are, Harrison Burton to win. Jarrett's officially the league office. Uh, save all these trades. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll certify the trades. He's gonna veto <laughs> don't, everything. Yeah, don't don't go Cleveland Browns or Bengals or whoever it was that didn't certify the trade or go Vikings and let the clock oh, run out in the draft. I, I'm telling yeah. you, I, I know how teams feel now in any sport and drafts with Eric picking Bell because Bell was my number one going in. I'm like, <laughs> I want him. Like he's like. I think I need like, him. I need. I want you. I need, I need you. Um, all right, let's get to uh, finishing this baby off, and then I can go and get myself some chicken. Sorry, I like <laughs> Zachary in the chat says, "Y'all sound like NASCAR. Just stick." We're to not really gonna system. trade. Don't don't. don't. No, 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 no. We're kidding. <laughs> we're kidding. Uh, let, <laughs> but next year. All right, let's finish this baby off here before we get too wild. So again, I can get my chicken. Uh, Bryce Sizemore, thank you for the five. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and mm-hmm. I'm still saying, holy crap! Shout out to Suarez and Team Trackhouse. Yeah, yeah. Adam, thank you for the five. That Atlanta finish or the Atlanta finish was good, but not as good as having to survive multiple tornadoes per race on BFM. What? Multiple tornadoes. Did you? Multiple tornadoes. What are you talking Did, about? Were there tornadoes hitting Nashville this weekend while you were no, streaming? Well, well, I know, well, I know my stream shut down once, but I know why. It wasn't because of like tornadoes or anything like that. But maybe he's talking about the race was chaotic. I, I don't know. You got to clarify more on that. But hey, he watched my stream though, so I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Nas Carson, thank you for the ten. Anyone going to Vegas this weekend? Spencer Purcell, enjoy your time there. Darian, any things I should do there? Uh, I'm planning on going there later this year. Well, if you're grown, go to the strip. It's always fun. Uh, y'all have a good time there too. Um, and then I, I don't know. It's Vegas. I don't know. Just Vegas is home to me. Like it's nothing to me. But Ooh, yeah, you go you visit the tunnel people. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. Go visit the tunnel people in the sewers. Yeah, there are people that live in the sewers underneath the strip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rolling race news asking for two. Can this be live on Spotify? Uh, not at the moment. No. No, no. Uh, maybe we'll work on that in the future, but for now, we're just keeping it a YouTube live only show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dominion, thank you for the 10. After the stupidity of trucks and Xfinity, Austin Hill is inevitable. Uh, the cup race was a much needed good showing. In my opinion, the second best next gen race after the 2022 Coke 600. Can't wait for next year. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, Rios, thank you for the five. Bold prediction. SHR will get another tier one through three penalty on <laughs> one or two of their cars later in the season. That sounds awfully familiar. That sounds yeah. like one of my predictions. I didn't mean to steal it from yeah. our super chat. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I, I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, Immortal says for two. Uh, what race we got also today is my birthday. Well, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Woo. What's it like being immortal? Uh, hollow good song for five says hey i was the guy they showed with the bill elliott button up and hooters tea that oh. was legendary what a damn oh, race nice. that's awesome I, yeah i saw that yeah uh sleeve thank you for being a member for a year saying cool to see david gilliland running up front uh, well close enough <laughs> yeah all close his enough. spawn <laughs> uh sleeve for the two as well uh went to cold take city they said danny was the mayor oh Ooh, they didn't like what was yeah. your t- i don't even forget what your take was <laughs> it, it was so cold we don't remember Ooh, no, Ooh. i don't know what it was <laughs> uh quattro i think is how you say it uh for 4.99 here going to bristol for my first race on the 17th any advice for a new fan uh there is not a bad seat in the house mm-hmm. uh and there is for such a small track in such an a small area there's so much to do vendor tents both on the track side as well as the other side of the street usually uh just enjoy the moment get there earlier too for the parking uh but just enjoy being there because there's so much that's so just uniquely bristol Mm-hmm. that's yeah. good advice bring sunscreen i don't know bring water you can get hot yeah. up. bring a rain jacket because yeah parts at bristol i was about to say umbrella just in case uh which by the way i mean talking about um 
the Bristol Spring Race, I was looking on that, and most of the fr- like a majority of the front grandstands look like the seats are sold. And now they're selling. They're also selling the corners and backstretch for this one, and they're looking better than previous Bristol races. So well, they want they wanted to get rid of dirt, and now they want the regular track back. <laughs> Cash Woods for two. This one's for Darian. Who is Icy yeah. Hurt? He is a Twitter god. No, no, no. He's someone I work with on Stark Raven Sports. He's a you know content creator. He's also you know a troller like me on Twitter. So uh, we can relate in a lot of ways. But uh, but yeah, yeah. No, so that's who he is. He's um he's the new industry plant, I guess. <laughs> uh, Rios for five says fun fact: Track House has trended NASCAR three out of four times in the last two years now. Yeah, that's the they're the viral team. Yeah. Viral team with the viral car. Marky Mark for the four saying howdy. Well, howdy. Howdy. Howdy, folks. Uh, like, dislike for the five saying BFM did a video on the original three wide finish at Atlanta. It's a good one. Y'all should go check it out. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Shameless it. Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, Shorty PGM left two uh, $5 super chats. Uh, first one says this race exhausted me, but it was so worth it. Suarez and his. His and Bubba's embrace their big smiles. I actually died and then was brought back. Um, and and Bubba trying his damnedest to get Blaney the win while damaged. Uh, Bubba starting with two top fives. That's right. Leading the Winston Cup points. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. B- best average finish so far this year. Let's go. Nice. Uh, Fred Dog 81 for the five. Is Childress going to kill the goodwill Kyle Busch has gotten this year? He's coming across as <laughs> A bitter loser every week. Calling Suarez an <laughs> idiot was classless. Oh I my god! I, I didn't hear what. What did he say about Suarez? He said that. Yeah, I know he had said it idiot. at some point, or someone had said it, but yeah, I don't remember that one. But well, I know strong Martinsville opinion. last year wasn't a good look. So yeah, strong opinion. Do you notice though who stayed the hell out of all of it? Kyle Busch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got a lawsuit to worry about. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. more pressing matters. Uh Alex Luft with a really good one here for two. Happy birthday to the racing legend, Mario Andretti. Yes, happy birthday. NASCAR will let you in, not F1. Come, come. We might have Honda. Yeah, we, we would love to have you. <laughs> Isaac, thank you for the two. Bowman P27, not great, but Vegas is good to him. So you're yeah. telling you all he's good. Considering on the radio, they originally said that they thought that Bowman was going to just go to the garage and be credited for last place finish. 27 ain't that bad, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, dislike for the two. I predict 18 different winners this year. Ooh. Ooh. That'd be interesting. Okay, okay, okay. And thank you to Quattro for being a new channel member. And Isaac, thank you for the two. Are the good TV ratings a result of NASCAR full speed? Uh, maybe Par- partly. Partly. Sure, partially. Can't partially. be hurting them, I imagine. I, I have to imagine not getting rained out helps. <laughs> and, yeah. and great racing and word of mouth, because it was trending on Twitter for a while, so that, that's like the modern word of mouth. Hey, look, Frank's yeah. in the chat. Um, hey. So. David Bell, thanks for the five. Viva Las Vegas, baby. Happy to see actual racing season starts finally. Yeah. Uh, 505, doom for the two. SHR equals the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, Broncos country. It's HR let's country. Die. Let's ride. Let's die. <laughs> uh, Hoosier Films, thanks for the five. Hopefully, NASCAR's current popularity bump saves face in the crowd at Indy. Uh, if Indiana fans, the home of racing, show up, then NASCAR may be back. Go MTJ. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting test to see how full how, or how full I, they can get that place. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I think people are going to be so they're going to lower their expectations so much for the crowd that if just like a, a section looks full, they'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. I'll be jumping up and down. <laughs> and, and the funny part is, is we'll probably, they'll probably be, especially with the hype it's built up and everything else. There's probably going to be like 80 to a hundred thousand people there. And people will be like, it's so empty. Yeah. <laughs> Which again, optics, not good, but I have a feeling there'll be a lot of people there. Um, Oh my God. It's La Quinta. That that's that's how you say it. Ah, <laughs> oh, I see IDK in the chat asking. I <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. David Bell for five says number one hashtag mobile one tri- bunch of hashtags for number one <laughs> mobile one Tricon and Toyota Racing. Go Christopher! Time for a truck win hashtag Viva Las Vegas. He had to make sure he got all the ads in there. <laughs> <laughs> 
For he real. paid hey, for it. You got to do what you got to do. He paid exactly. for it, man. Got to do what you got to do. Uh, Ross, chat, uh, Ross Crash Stain for the two. Those truckers were ruthless. Every single one. Ha. Uh, ha. Ha, ha, ha. That's good. Wow. That's, that's good. Ha, ha. <laughs> Need she for speed, that. 53, 53. This is funny that the Ty Dillon one comes up next for five. Ty Dillon, try not to hit strange debris challenge. Impossible. First a battery, now a roof. No, seriously. <laughs> That's you right. Can't, you can't catch a break, man. Uh, I'll reset on me, damn it. Hold What's on. next week? A caution light's going to fall from the... During the race again. <laughs> what has yeah. happened? Like, when have you seen a roof fly off? Like, Stay safe, never. mittens. I, I feel like what would be something weird like a um like a roof flap mm-hmm. fell off or something or maybe like two left side tires both of them falling off at the same time during I mean that's just a bad pit crew at that yeah point. yeah <laughs> that'd be it's crazy really windy and someone has an unsecured like tent like like one of those blue ones you put over your uh, picnic table and it goes flying into the track and tie yeah. it yeah. <laughs> a movement for the two wins icy vert coming on the show uh we'll let you know yeah 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 you never know uh wolf that turns left for five in my opinion losing out on larson was the start of shr's decline and most of the team just checked out some other team please save uh briscoe's say briscoe. career yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Bristol's career. Uh, yeah. Gary Buki, thank you for the 10. My group went from a watch party where everyone left dejected <laughs> last week <laughs> yeah. to, That's right. to one of the most hype parties I've ever hosted. Redemption. Had I'm glad us, y'all got to have another party. That's good. Yeah. Had us yeah. jumping out of our seats multiple times. We're so back and le- left a taco in there. Nice. Uh, oh, chicken. Chicken taco. Chicken mittens, taco. the racing cat for two. What's up, Mittens? Mittens should be also the mascot for NWP. Wouldn't it just be a giant splatter mark at that point? Oh, oh no, no, God. No. Hey, Mittens. Cover your ears, is, Mittens. Jeez. Mittens is uh, in heaven with Auto Club Speedway now. Auto Club Speedway <laughs> joined. <laughs> well, I mean, the the asphalt that Mittens died on isn't there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> You know, you know how like Talladega, there's a legend. It was like you know built on an ancient Indian burial yeah, ground. Yeah. Now Auto Club is. Do you Auto think Club mittens, has You think mittens <laughs> curse the track? Yep. Sounds like it. Yeah, it sounds like it. Sleeve for two says evil Eric Estep. I'll have fried steak for dinner. It's a uh, chicken. Chicken. Uh, thank you, hey, Quattro, for the. Chicken fried steak is good though. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Quattro, for the five gifted memberships. Uh, Fred Dog eighty one. Thank you for the two. Michael Waltrip Racing thinks SHR cheats too much. <laughs> <laughs> KD, thanks for the five. A bit of trivia: Which two manufacturers only have one win in the history of the Cup Series? Well, I know one of them is Jaguar. Uh, Oldsmobile. Yeah. No, I don't know. Do um, I feel like it's one that probably doesn't exist uh, anymore. Volvo, <laughs> Saturn. <laughs> Uh, Chrysler. Uh, I don't know. No, not. I'm Chrysler. like waiting for the uh, chat because Mercedes. Does it start with an N. I get the. I, uh, I thought I've heard before. Tesla. Yeah, you're gonna have to help us, KD. I, I have no clue. I got no clue, bro. Uh, yeah, let us know in the chat. So, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. I think Alessandro got it. Or what? Oh, what Studebaker. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Gotcha. That's what it is. Mm. Jack, Jack well, Marsh. some are saying it's Nash. Oh, so nice. maybe I was right. Uh, yeah, okay. Peter says oh. it is, so it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll go with Peter's word. <laughs> I knew, I, I knew the letter. I just didn't know what the word was. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what car? Like, I'm like, it ain't Nissan. <laughs> uh, Christian Forrest, thank you for the two y'all y'all's thoughts on uh, my Logano scheme on 15. Oh, that looked really nice. I saw that. Nice, yeah, uh, yeah. Tag no, no. Very detailed, bro. You're you're talented. Rocks, reviews, and reactions for two. Bold prediction, SHR will win a few races this year. That is bold. I, that is a hot I, take. Dude, I said I said that. Look what happened. <laughs> it's always, it is a long way to go. Long yeah, but way you to jinx go. everyone. You yeah. can't even get to a few if you don't even get one. Yeah. And half the team season hasn't even started yet now. <laughs> Uh, Garrett Boogie for the 10 kind of got overshadowed at Atlanta, but shout out to Hosevar for keeping that car straight after getting absolutely body slammed with some air by spinning Josh Berry. He and, still finished top 20. Yeah, he was involved in the lap one wreck, a uh, lap two incident, and was still able to be there in the top 10 towards the end. Alessandro, thank you for the 
Five, SHR sucks badly when it comes to cheating. They can't even do that right. Also, all this chicken talk is making me hungry. Chicken, it is too. Chicken. Yeah, you both. Someone needs. Okay, if you're a fan of the band Rush, just look up Rush Chicken video. It's nothing bad. It's just funny as hell. Rush Chicken sounds like a fast food chain. Chicken. Yeah. Alex, thank for the ten. Uh, with that Intimidator roller coaster potentially changing its name, it will be. Uh, I got a sinking feeling my super chat last week comparing Teresa Earnhardt to Jack Horner from Puss in Boots kind of triggered her. Oh, so it's your fault, Alex. You saw this. It was like, oh, I'll take away the licensing yeah. everywhere. Now. Everyone knows that Teresa watches us every week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, no. Nah. <laughs> she's a big Puss in Boots fan. Yeah. Or not if, if she's Jack Horner. Uh, your favorite Stang for... Uh, two, thanks for the first super chat on the channel. Lawless Allen and Jack Wood are my champ picks. Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have another one. <laughs> Bobby Blair, thank you for the five. That's a nice name. Uh, what yeah. current veteran cup driver do y'all think is the most underrated? My vote would be Martin Truex Jr. Uh, I mean, maybe McDowell at this point, I feel nah, like. I've, I feel like I we, we recognize McDowell being good. All right. Though. Uh, yeah, I think Kozlowski gets overlooked still a little, especially because he's been winless for three years yeah. or whatever. Uh, I'll say Kozlowski too then. Yeah, Kozlowski's on a 100 race winless streak now, mm-hmm. so maybe maybe he is properly <laughs> rated. I don't know, but he's a champion. Damn it, we forget. Don't forget about yeah. that. What do you think, Danny? Um, go with Kozlowski too. I think because of the hate he gets, and I know this probably doesn't fit necessarily the criteria, but so many fans like refuse to give Denny Hamlin credit. Like every, yeah, everyone thinks, true. I mean, everyone calls him a choker. Like outside of 2010, what year has it been him, not the team, him that's fully choked a championship away. I mean, look at the, like, look at the, the hail melon is what had to eliminate yeah. him in 2022. Yeah. So yeah, no, he's one of he's, something he, at Texas last year. Yeah. No, because where did we have him on our top seventy five list last year? Like what near the, near the top ten? He's something near like the top, that, right? Yeah, he's, 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 he should yeah, definitely 20. be top twenty. Yeah, top fifteen. No, yeah. he's one of the all time greats. And people act like he's some kind of scrub. No, he's like, not. He's not. Yeah. yeah. People just he's fun to hate. He, he's the heel. He so. is. exactly. Yeah, he, he plays it is. well. Uh, plays it well. Pablo, thank you for the two. Will Suarez get another win before the playoffs? I vote no personally. No, I'm gonna say him winning at all. So. Yeah, I'm gonna say no right now. So another win, that'd be a plus, definitely. I hope, I hope his uh wife, fiance, I hope that she doesn't watch this podcast. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, hey, we oh, gave no. him his props hey, in the early yeah. part. We gave let's, him his let's, props. Let's bro. make it clear. We like Daniel. We're happy he won. <laughs> but if you're asking me to be honest here, we don't want no smoke, but we want to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, keep it. Uh, we want to keep it real. Mittens left a two dollars super chat saying that Danny is his favorite now. Hell yeah, <laughs> of course. Movement uh, for five says Derek Krause was born eight minutes from me. Oh. Uh, been following him forever. Glad to see him in Cup. I, yeah. When I first read that super chat, I thought he said like eight minutes after me, and I'm like, wow. Well, how was, do like, you know? <laughs> you know? Like sharing a hospital room? Like yeah. y'all like high five on on the way out? No, <laughs> no. I, honestly, when I saw the I, um um when I saw the born eight minutes part, I thought it was gonna be like, hey, he was born eight minutes ago, and now he's in a cup ride. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It goes back to something we talked about last year. Oh, you're out of womb. You're past your prime for racing, son. Uh, awesome. What? You're not even in a quarter midget yet? <laughs> yeah. What have you been doing. <laughs> Austin Blancet has a good question here for five. Uh, if you could pick a town in the United States to build a new short track in, where would you put it? I okay. This one's good. This one would be really fun just because of the marketing side of it. Mm-hmm. Little Rock. I'm going to go with San Antonio. Seems mm. interesting. Interesting to me. Um. Yeah. Selfishly, I would go like Houston or something. But like more realistically, why not like. I guess Kansas is close by, and I know Texas Motor Speedway is close by, but somewhere in Oklahoma. They got the Chili Bowl, big racing scene, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like they could do something in Tulsa or uh, OKC. Uh, un- unfortunately, now I in probably a year or so, once it's finally, unfortunately, gone, I could even say McChesney Park, Illinois. Mm. Yeah. Nothing's being built there, by the way. Seriously, they, nothing's being built there. Uh, I would go with a town we've been to recently that's a pretty nice town uh, aside from the wildcats they don't have much honestly the state of kentucky doesn't have any professional oh. 
sports, I would go with Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Got to get one Kentucky track to work well. <laughs> yeah, maybe that'll become the next Daytona 5. Yeah, 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 maybe. Uh, Sky 4X uh, for two here. P3 in the points. I oh, believe yeah. In, yeah. But yeah, well done. We know. Rocking uh, with them. Chris Cahill, thank you for the Canadian Five with Mexico and Canada. Uh, could that could be getting dates? What tracks would be gone? I oh, said, I said, I said Dover. I really think Dover's on the chopping block. Person, <sighs> they've been they're, they're owned by S. It'd have to be a NASCAR yeah, track. Okay, I think. okay, okay, or NASCAR independent. Owned. So it could be Indy or Pocono, but it won't be Indy or Pocono. Uh, uh, but they wouldn't dare. Well, well, New Hampshire's not NASCAR owned. Never mind. So. Mm, one of the Kansas about, races or Richmond. Yeah, I could see one of the Richmond races. That I, sounds I would, logical. I wouldn't hate a Richmond going away. Sorry, Richmond fans. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, y'all. Considering yeah. that it would likely be a road course, if you're trading it out for another road course, and if it's not, it's not owned by SMI. They kind of they lease Coda, or, so. or they lease Coda. So I could maybe see Coda, and in turn, SMI just leases out wherever they're gonna go. Yeah. God, that's going to be difficult. I do not envy Ben Kennedy because <laughs> I think in general he's made some really good moves, but man, like whatever he chooses, because I think the schedule, like this year's j- janky because of the Olympics, but I I think in general since 21, the schedule has been really, really good. It's been fun, but it's like, how do you keep one-upping yourself every yeah, year? Yeah, eventually and, fans are going to do something, or you're going to do something fans don't like. And I just feel like now with you know, Chicago being a mild success, you know, the Coliseum has come and gone. I feel like we're at a pivotal moment with the Netflix show, with you know some of these viral moments. Like You got to get this next schedule right. Your next big market you splash into needs to be the right one. It needs to be done well. So that's a lot yeah. of pressure. And then final super chat at the moment, fittingly from Fred Dog eighty one for two here, <laughs> saying eating Popeyes this weekend in honor of you guys. Yes, chicken. sir. Can't, can't go wrong with that. Chicken. The chicken can't go wrong. The chicken is chicken. damn good. Uh, all right, I think that's about gonna cover it tonight. Uh, so remember, next week where where do we have it? I have so many things in here to to like show everyone. Next week. We'll be on Danny's channel, the Pick Point Leader, uh, live March 6th on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we will also have Thad Moffat on for part of the show as well. And remember that uh, Eric will have on the 13th Jet on the show. That'll be a lot of fun. And Ellie Productions coming on March 20th on Darian's. Uh, Guys, I think that about covers it, right? Yeah, time to eat some chicken. Time to eat some chicken. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm probably gonna be getting myself some chicken tacos tonight. Yeah. Like I get the I get the I get the chicken I want. I get to, you know, get a taco for Suarez like the like the pinata he had like the crunch wrap supreme. <laughs> I'll tell you guys a funny story about that from Daytona after we get off here. But uh, I think that about covers it. You guys good? We good? We'll head yep. out. I'm good. All good. right. Later, good. everybody. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Drivers! 